Let me just say this. I wanted Ruth in and sing this song because it doesn't take too much of asking Father to let his fire fall upon you just by crying out to him. And things will begin to change in your life. He got a manjela to asking Father to let His glory and His fire fall upon a region and a city. I mean, two men got together, Father Nash and, and another guy named Charles Finney, and they turned the United States of America upside down, calling for the fire of God to fall. Two men got together. We might, what could a group of people like this do tonight? If all of a sudden, if all of a sudden the cares of this life and the deceitfulness of riches, this pleasure of this world was no longer able to infect you, affect you, your situation, your circumstances at home, your failures, your discouragements, your wishes, your wants, your issues, your money in your bank account, you know, the quality of your car, whatever else it is, you know, what people are wrapped up in emotionally. What if all of a sudden you died and went to heaven? What if tonight, tonight you died and went to heaven? What if right now you died and went to heaven spiritually? You'd, everything would get good for you. Everything would get good for you. So Karamama Magena Menika Sodolo La Makadea. Sikolo Magishike. Look, I'm telling you right now. You may not understand it, but the cloud of God's presence is here. Some people some, there are certain times that deny I came to see people's faces. But you know what? People around Jesus didn't even know he was there. They around Jesus, they were around the eternal God didn't even know he was there. You can, you can have Father come step into your room and give you, ready to give you a, an outpouring of His Spirit. And because your heart's not even ready, you miss your opportunity. One of the most important things about staying filled up with the Spirit, the things of the Holy Ghost, is to be prepared to be ready for when God's pouring out His Spirit when He comes and moves among us. People just want it according to their will. Okay, God, I'm ready for you to come and fill me now. Okay, Father, I'm ready to come. Forgive me. Give me some gifts now. He's not going to come then necessarily. He's going, he's going to come when he wants to. He's going to come and he's going to move. And if he finds you ready, you're, there is a reward for you. And it's that way, not only just in terms of when he comes, ultimately to gather us home unto himself. He comes, many of you aren't expecting him to come. And you know what? It has been a key to revival. It's been a key to revival. It's been a key that it, revivalists have preached throughout the time of the history of the church. And people who listened, they said, wow, we need to be you know, we need to get a hold of this thing and walk in it, move in it. You can be seated. You know, I look around and I can see where some of you are being intimidated by Satan. Why? Why, why, why get picked on? Why live continually being picked on? Dude, boy, that's no life. Why don't you understand there's a shield of faith? You know, go ahead and understand that there's a realm of glory. Father, you know, listen. People, everybody's, everybody's all concerned about what's going on. Gross darkness over the people. Darkness on the land. Gross darkness over the people. And I have people talk about all the darkness and the gross darkness. And, you know, it's like, hey, man, you don't even have a right to talk about it. Because reality of it is, you know what needs to be done in order to, to remedy the situation. Well, to, to remedy the situation, you're supposed to rise and shine. So you shouldn't be talking about what the world's doing. You should be talking about, hey, you know what? There's gross darkness over the people, but I ain't shining. You know what? I, the Lord, he said, rise, shine. He says, for the rising of the sun, rising of the, of the glory of the Lord is upon you like the, the glory of the Lord is upon you like the rising of the sun. The shining of the sun at noonday. That's pretty radical, isn't it? The Lord makes it very clear how to redeem the times. He said, be, he can be say, baka do ya baya. He said, He said, continually be filled with the Spirit. Now listen, listen to me. People want to make, make believe that they understand what being filled with the Spirit is, but it's make believe. Because the scripture says, in the scripture, they don't want to go with what God said in His Word. And it's a make believe being filled with the Spirit. So why is it that God's people want to live in disobedience or make believe? I don't understand it. Do you? I don't get it. Not when it's so much fun. To live in the things that God has for us is so wonderful. Hey, it's glorious to live happy all day long. It's glorious to be blessed coming in and going out. It's just a lot of blessing, you know. Why don't everybody want this? I mean, we want the world to be impressed around us when we are not impressed, right? We, we, want, we want things to change in people's hearts around us when things haven't changed in our hearts. Come on, people, listen to me now. I want some response around here. 
I want you to just start moving in God. Don't sit there and look at me like that. Start moving into God. Start moving in God. Don't sit there and look at me like that or you're going to be looking like that when Jesus comes. You're going to, you're going to miss out on everything. Just start moving. You just start moving in God. You say, wait a minute. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to be filled with the Spirit. What does it mean to be filled with the Spirit? Jesus said you should receive power from on high. Not many days from now. In Acts chapter, in Acts chapter 1 verse 5. If you have your Bibles, I want you to look at that. In Acts chapter 1, just look. Get your Bibles. Look at what Jesus said in Acts chapter 1, verse 5. He's, this is Jesus talking. He said, John truly baptized. See, people think that the gospels end with John. It doesn't. Jesus is still talking. He says, John truly baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days from now. One night I was, I was sitting with a bunch of, of men of God on a front row in a great meeting in the United States of America. There was theologians on the front row. There was great evangelists on the front row. I was sitting by a guy who has, God's used him to reach over 12 million people for the Lord. And he turned to me, he said, Mark, he said, what, is really, what does baptism really mean? I said, well, there was this doctor in the second century BC, Nicander is his name. And I said, he used the same word in describing how to make pickles. So if you don't like baptism, use, instead of baptism, baptism, use pickled. You shall be pickled. You shall be so filled up and saturated on the inside that the whole nature of your insides take on the, the nature of your surroundings. You'll be so filled up on the inside and so surrounded on the outside. That's baptism. She so says, you're going to be baptized. And he says, you're going to be baptized in the spirit of holiness. You're going to be baptized in the very power of God. Listen, if you understand what the Holy Ghost is, you understand how the Holy Ghost works. Listen, this is powerful stuff. When G Jesus goes to be baptized of John in the Jordan, and, and he's going to fulfill all righteousness, and he's going to submit himself to the ministry that God's already raised up. He doesn't say, oh, I'm a greater minister than you. I got more anointing. He goes and submits himself to the minister that God's raised up. Because, see, God will not circumvent his authority. He's not going to do it. God obeys his spiritual laws, whether no one else does or not. People want to advance in the kingdom of God, and they do not want to observe spiritual laws. First and foremost, people need to understand what spiritual laws are. And then observe them, because they're not that, very, that, they're not that difficult, you know. <laughs> You know, there's spiritual laws to observe. If you, if you violate them, you're going to be in your miserable state. Father's going to observe his, his, his spiritual laws. And so when Jesus went and submitted himself, did what Father wanted him to do, fulfilled all righteousness, then that moment the heavens were open. As soon as Jesus obeyed, did what was he supposed to do, submit himself to John's ministry, get baptized to John, then the heavens were open. And what happened? The Holy Ghost came upon him. He's baptized in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And what happened then as a result? His miracle ministry started. The signs of the power of God, casting out devils, the, the blind seeing, the deaf hearing, the crippled walking. Now what the Lord did is he said, listen, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you the same authority and power that, that I have. If you read, if, if you read, I want you to just hold your finger on this because it's very important. I want to set you up with something, okay? I want you to go over to John chapter 8 real quickly. Leaves of the, leaves of the tree are, are, are rustling. I can hear the rustling of the leaves. Huh? I can hear the rustling of the leaves. I can hear the changing of the electronics buzzing. If you go to John 8, and he says in verse 31, Then Jesus said to those Jews which believed on him. He says, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And Jesus, Jesus is declaring to us as the word of God. He's declaring to us the word of God, the word of God that was given to us to be able to grow and mature, to know the will of God. And the word of God tells us exactly what we're supposed to do, where we're supposed to meet God, how we're supposed to interact with him, how we're supposed to respond to situations, how we're supposed to do things. And then he empowers us to fulfill what he's asked us to do. However, if he says, come over here and do this, if he says, come over here and bless those who persecute you and you still go over here and you curse them, guess what? God, the Holy Ghost isn't going to be with you. There's going to be no spiritual development. I want you to understand something. Christ Jesus, the word came and gave to us and unveiled to us the fullness of the word. You understand that? He's the word. 
He revealed the fullness of the word. He came and connected all the dots with his word. He came and showed us this whole new realm of living and handed us off to the Holy Ghost. He said this. I want you to go and look at this with me. I want you to go look at this verse of scripture with me. And now in, you go look in John chapter 16. Turn with me to John chapter 16. It's just a few chapters down the road for John chapter 8. Right? You're with me? Everybody here? 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I'm going to try to break this down thing down here. Make it simple. I'm going to try to get you every chapter. I'm going to walk you all the way through this. If I need to come and turn the pages in your Bible tonight, I will do that. I'll do whatever it takes. Amen. Because the change is... You, you... Look. Reality of it is, is God will speak. But if you don't do it, nothing's going to happen. Father's going to show you how to stay in this realm. But if you don't want it, you ain't going to change. You're going to have you for the rest of your life. God has given to us a place in Him to where we can say, I no longer live. It's Christ Jesus that lives. I can, I can now make manifest the mystery of the fellowship and say, hey, Christ Jesus is in me. <laughs> I can say tonight, because I've received a free gift that I didn't earn, that I'm one with God. That is radical. You got to be kidding me. You can say that. Yeah, I'm in him. I'm, he's in me. I can say that, Father, as he said in John 17, 21, Father, the glory you gave to me, I've given it to them so they can be one just like we're one. And I'm not interested in being one with you to start with. That doesn't sound like in a good, that is, honestly, I'm going to just tell you like this, that doesn't sound like a big deal to me. Being one with you, but being one with God, that sounds like a big deal. And you know what happens as soon as I get one with God? I feel about God the same way he feels about you, the same way he feels about me. And immediately, because you're one with God and I'm one with God, we one with each other. And you see, because now we walk in the light of season, like we got fellowship, we connected. Now when he moves, we move with him. God, the Holy Ghost, wants to show us th that, uh, how to live a life that when he goes, we go. When he goes, we go. When he goes, we go. He wants to show us how to live and walk and move in the Holy Ghost. To live and walk and move in God. And he made it simple. He got our mouth into it. He got Somebody said, I don't understand that. You got to be born in the Spirit before you can understand it. They said to Jesus, oh, if you're really the Christ, tell us plainly. He goes, no. Basically, he said, no. John chapter 10, no. He said, if you, he said, if you're my sheep, you'd hear my voice. If you're my sheep, you'd know who I am. You can't respond to me because you, you, you're, you're, there's something wrong with your heart. You're unwilling to listen. You're, unwill you're unwilling to hear. God gave everybody a chance in Israel. Did you see that? Have you gotten through numbers? Everybody wave at me if you've gotten through numbers. Didn't you see that? You see that? Didn't Moses open up the earth and swallow everybody up? Didn't he? Did, did you see that? No, he didn't. God did it, but he got blamed, didn't he? Oh, you're trying to kill all of us. You opened up the earth and swallowed up Korah, Dathan. You know? Are you, are you with me? Are you with me? And the next day, said, Lord, I'm sick of it. I'm tired of this. And he sent out a plague. Aaron makes intercession. And then they just basically all complained, we're all dead, man, we're all dead. They called, they, did you notice how they called Egypt the land of milk and honey? You brought it, you took us from the land of milk and honey. You brought us up in here to the wilderness to die and just told us a fairy tale about it, that land of milk and honey. Did you notice that? As people. Everybody had the chance. Everybody had the opportunity. I want to ask you, can you convince yourself that you're any different? How many people here tonight, can you convince yourself that you're Joshua and Caleb? You ain't moving, man. You ain't budging. You got the high ground. You're going to walk over here and live in this land of inheritance and blessing in God. Come on now. Because that's an, that is a force of your will. That's a tenacity. That's a relentlessness. That is a, that is a consecration. That is a place of sanctification. I don't know. I don't hear many people preach on sanctification. For me, sanctification is simply this. It's being consecrated. To let the Holy Ghost teach you how to live the life of Jesus. That's sanctification. I'm consecrated to let the Holy Ghost teach me how to live the life of Jesus. All I want to do is, is be taught by the Holy Ghost to live the life of Jesus. Now i got to hook up with Him. I, I need to understand how to have my emotions overwhelmed by holy emotions. I want you to say this with me. Say, Lord, strengthen me in my body to stand against sickness and disease. 
Lord, strengthen me in my spirit to stand against sin and iniquity. Lord, strengthen me in my soul to love only you, to desire only holy emotions, to desire only those pleasures that are in your presence. Ooh, do you believe any of that part we just said? I do. I'm letting you pray my prayer. I will let you sing my song. Why don't you pray my prayer? Then you get your own prayer to pray and introduce me to one that's going to make a difference in my life because this one made a difference in my life. This one, this is where I find living and divine health. This is where I find a resolve. I give myself over to the Holy Ghost. Let me tell you what happens. I give myself over to the Holy Ghost, and it's like a, it's like a, a governor in my life. As soon as the, the, the anointing, as it were, starts to get a little lesson, huh? You know what happens? Kicks in. Turn this up. They can't hear me. Everybody's just sitting there looking at, you, looking at me like I'm on a movie theater, a screen. Like you're not interacting. Interact. Interact. Respond to the anointing. Respond to the anointing. Respond to the anointing. No, it isn't so much about what you do. It's about how you receive. It's about how you receive. It's about an interaction. There's something that going. I want you to know there's something more about you than your physical appearance that can be seen. I want you to know there's something more about you than your physical appearance that can be seen. There is a governor. If you give yourself to the Holy Ghost, participating with him, he will govern, rule your heart and your mind. He will. He, he will. The Word of God will govern, rule your heart and your mind. The Holy Ghost will govern, rule your heart and your mind. He will, you will be continually filled with the Spirit. This continually, continual overwhelming of the Holy Ghost. Now let me tell you something. We'll kick in and there will be a, there will be a place where now I find myself right back into that same place of interaction and manifest presence. Let me just say this. I'll be walking down, I'll be getting ready to go someplace, walking down the road, whatever. There is an anointing that kicks in and a, a tongue that comes and I know I'm getting ready to face temptation of some sort. So it's already, it's already, a, the alarm's going off. Ba, 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 ba. My dad's phone, cellular phone uh, uh, ringer. Ba, it's an alarm, it's, but it's the Holy Ghost alarm. So I know, oh, uh, Holy Ghost is strengthening me. He's preparing me to deal and face something so I don't have to go walk around blindly it's wonderful not to walk around blindly it's not it's wonderful not to get upside the head with something that you you know basically just came out of nowhere huh the Holy Spirit wants to teach us how to live in him live by him walk in him be touched by him be filled by him be taught by him be directed by him be strengthened by him I mean come on do you really understand do you really understand how to, be, how to receive the strength of the Lord and the power of his might? Do you know how to fundamentally do that? I want to see you do that right now. Do it for me. I want, I want to see you do it. I want to see you do it. There is a way to receive the strength of the Lord and the power of his might. And when you begin to function in this realm, you step into healing. You don't have to be in a healing line anymore. Are you listening to me? You step into a divine ability to be comforted when everything when the storms of life are coming against you. You step into a divine ability to have faith to speak to a mountain. You listen, when 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 everybody else says it's in, it's an impossible situation, nothing's going to change. Listen, you know when I was uh, overseas in, in Nepal one time in 2006, we took a bunch of kids, Presbyterians, Methodists, Assemblies of God. And independent Pentecostals, we brought them into a meeting and we trained them for three days on faith. And I defined, I said, forget about everything you know about faith, everything they taught you about in Bible school about faith, forget about it. I started on the basis of faith in, in Matthew chapter 8, verse 10, saying this is how Jesus defined faith. When a man came to him and said, speak the word only, and I know my servant will be made whole. And he said, this is faith. This is the exact faith. And then he went on to say, anybody who has a little bit of faith, you can say to this mountain, be removed. You can say to this sycamine tree, be plucked up, be planted to see. And everything you say, anything you say, it will have to happen in this realm of faith. Well, these guys got so radical. I'm talking to you about the Presbyterian kids and the Baptist in the Baptist, um, the Presbyterian kids, rather, in the, in the Presbyterian Bible College. These guys 
they went, they went, they got radical. They were casting devils out of people. It was crazy, man. They were jumping on people that were devil demon possessed. They were jumping on them. And, and they were dragging people around out of wheelchairs, dragging them out of wheelchairs. Their knees were all scuffed up, but they started walking. The demon spirits was, were, was leaving them. What, what, how they, it was manifest power of God in an amazing way. That, but people sit around and what's what's going to happen. If you consume with the world, you'll sit around and hear these things and you'll become dull to them. You become desensitized to them. They were very sensitive. They never heard nothing like this in their life. They never heard anything. They never heard any teaching like that in their entire life. And as a result, they just took the thing and they ran with it. I want you to be able to just kind of get, get a fresh start here with the Lord tonight. And I want you to get faith in a realm that you can actually walk with the Holy Spirit, interact with the Holy Spirit, have visions and have dreams. Did you know that the Lord has sworn that he will have the whole earth filled with his glory? Did you know that? He said, as I live, the whole earth will be filled with my glory. Did you know that? That's the, that's the fact. As the water covers the sea, the whole earth will be filled with his glory. And that glory, that outpouring of that glory started when he came and gave to us the gift of the Holy Ghost something that you and I can be filled with so much so that out of our innermost being begins to be a floods of, of his presence. I mean, I see a lot of you drinking water here tonight. You thirsty. You thirsty for the wrong thing, though. You need to be thirsty for God. You need to be thirsty. Somebody said, oh, I'm thirsty. You need to be more thirsty. Huh? There's different, everybody knows that there's different areas of thirst, isn't there? There's a thirst that you just drank five minutes ago. Are you with me? There's thirst that you just had something to drink an hour ago. Huh? There's thirst that you had something to drink five hours ago. Huh? There's thirst that you had something to drink yesterday. Are you with me? There's thirst that you hadn't drank for two days. Are you with me? There's different kinds of thirst. Ha, ha, ha. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, you're going to step into a realm in the Holy Ghost to where that you're participating with him on a level that when you walk in here, there is an overflow of heaven in your life. Not this other thing that's bogging you down. Because, listen, it's the same trick Satan's doing effectively against all God's people all over the United States. There's nothing different. If you can understand Satan's strategy against you, I mean, my goodness, he's not even that smart in terms of executing a strategy because he doesn't need to be. One trick works on everybody. You would think that he would have to come up with a couple of extra tricks to, you know, well, they got that one already. I got to come out with a new one. Now, nah, same one works every time. He said, come on, you know what? They're just, they're really stupid people, especially the Christians. All we got to do is just one thing. <laughs> no, 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 no more. Say no more. Say no more. Say no more. Say no more. I'm done with that. Look in John chapter 16. Okay. Here's what Jesus said. He said this. Verse 12. I have many words to speak to you. Look at this. But you wouldn't understand them. First thing first, folks. You got to be born of the Spirit. If what I'm saying to you doesn't make any sense, you've not been born of the Spirit. What I'm saying to you doesn't make any sense. You have a natural mind and it's opposed to the things of God. It's a testimony. God's got witnesses right, left, and center about those who are born of him and those who aren't born of him. You, the Holy Ghost will bear witness with your spirit and these things will be jumping up and down on the inside of you and you say, man, I want to walk out the walk of faith. I want to live in the realms of faith. I want to live in the heavenly realm. I want to interact with the Holy Ghost. I want to lay down tonight. I want to, I want to, go, I, I want to go to heaven. I want, I want to go into that place of revelation. I, I, love, I love to look at my bed, not just because I rest, but because the Lord always visits me. He always visits me in the night. Hallelujah. Uh, we go to bed. And we wake up. During the night. And sometimes things get really wild in our house in the night. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We want things to get really wild in your house tonight. Father's preparing us to shake nations. Listen to me. 
Father's preparing us. I don't know what you're doing with your life. I don't know what you're trying to find out in your own personal identity of things. But for me, I'm going to tell you what's going on, what I know. God is shaping us to shake nations. He's, he's actually working with us, preparing us to move and function in the Holy Ghost in every dimension of faith to not back up, not back off for one single reason, for one single moment, for any reason. We preach not ourselves, but Jesus. I know a guy who sat in a wheelchair praying for people, and almost everybody he prayed for had a miracle. Why? Because he preached not himself, but Jesus. People, just, people wanted to say, well, because of this and thing, this thing and that thing and the other thing, the Word of God has changed. Of course, they don't verbalize it like that, you know, but that's what they feel. You know, because I'm in this situation, evidently, you know, I'm, you know, I'm, 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 whatever. No, no, come on, people. Jesus said, I've got many things to say to you. You can't bear them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get out of here and hand you off to the Holy Ghost. You listen to me. You listen to me. Jesus said, now come on. Jesus said, I'm a, I've got many things to say you can't understand them. So I'm going to get out of here and hand you off to the Holy Ghost. Ha! Now in Jesus' name, you listen to me. Oh, I wish I could walk around with Jesus. Hey, you walk around with the Holy Ghost. Hey, you got you cloud of fire up over top of you and even more. You pickled in it. And you don't even know it. You say, look at those poor Israelites. Man, eating man from heaven. Cloud of fire by night. Pillar by day. All oh, that's stupid. You pickled. And don't know it. They're all the grace. God, of all, the scripture says, Jesus said, and of all my fullness have you received. And we don't even know it. We don't even know it. An unlimited realm of God, and we leave it dormant. It never gets exercised. It never grows. The Word of God isn't for information. It's for you to show, it's for God to show you what you're supposed to be doing. And then when you say, my goodness, I'm supposed to be speaking to mountains. How am I supposed to do that? He said, right here I am. I'm your huckleberry. <laughs> right here I am. The Holy Ghost says, come over here. Come over here. Let me show you how to do this. Jesus says, I'm going to endue you with power from on high. Turn this up. Nobody's listening to me. I don't feel like I'm being heard. I don't, I can, I, in, in, in American church, it's hard to be heard. Because there's, there's looky here. It's, it's just hard to be heard. Even in the best churches, it's hard to be heard. You can stand up, I can stand up and whisper in, in, in mass evangelism crusades. Whisper. And I whisper, and the power of God floods the place. Just whisper, just say hello. Bang! There's not even, a, there's not even time to preach. Devils go out, people, I'm, this is an absolutely no exaggeration. Total pandemonium. Just hello. Look, why? Because Satan knows what we are he knows what we've been gifted with he knows the amount of word and the authority of the word that is in us he knows what father would do with us should we turn ourselves over to him he satan understands what it looks like when somebody begins to cooperate with the holy ghost he can't contain them he can't stop them he comes to them he has nothing in them he can't touch them they will absolutely eradicate his kingdom Casting out devils. Jesus went everywhere to destroy the works of the devil and said, you're going to do it better. I'm going to say it again. Jesus, said, Jesus went everywhere. Jesus went everywhere destroying the work of the devil. And he said, you're going to do it better. These works which I do, shall you do. And greater, better, more voluminous. Somebody said, well, that's the whole of the body of Christ. No. He said, you individually. Anyone who believes he made it to a personal level, an individual level, not a collective level. John 14, 12 makes it on an individual level. What happens if all of a sudden you begin to turn your heart and you say, you know what, I'm done, being, I'm done pursuing my career. I'm done pursuing my own interest in life. I'm done. Now I'm going to go to heaven. And I, I'm going to now follow Jesus from this day forward. I'm going to continue or live or abide in his word. Jesus said, Come and abide in me. He says, he, he's, like, he's like this. He says, come and dwell at my house. Come and dwell all the time with me. I want you to go everywhere with me. 
One time Carlos came to me after a meeting and he said, I want you to go everywhere with me. I want to start putting you up in crusades. I want you to start doing crusades in Argentina. He said, let's go. And I was honored. I was honored. And then I would be honored to do that, eh? The Lord would have released me. However, the Holy Ghost says, come here. I want you to go everywhere with me. I'm going to set you up and show you how to do these works and greater works than those that Jesus did. Hey, I'm going with him. Are you going to go with him? Or, but, but, but there's something you go, there's a price you got to pay. The price you are going to pay. You can't do your own will anymore. You can't do your own pleasure. You can't even speak your own words. If you do that, then the Lord says, I'll cause you to ride upon your high places and I'll feed you with the heritage of Jacob. That's what he says. Isaiah 58, 13. That's what he said. That's what he said. And, and he's made it more real when he said, I'm going to baptize you in the Holy Ghost. I'm going to go. I have to go away because I got things that I need to teach you. But when the Holy Ghost comes, he will lead you and guide you into all truth. But he doesn't force you. He doesn't grab all these. You got to listen to me. You got to do what I say. We got to submit our will. We got to participate. We got to want this. We got to hunger and thirst. Jesus said, if you're really thirsty, come to me. I'll give you the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit does not. The Holy Spirit does not force us to do anything. He invites us. If we will receive him, if we will participate with him, if we will be continually filled, something different will happen in our life. Baby, here's baby, okay? Hi, darling. Papa loves that baby. I know you're a big girl now. Baby was born one pound, three ounces, right? One thing after another hit her. One thing after another. The Lord healed her, touched her, just was there, okay? Basically, she had one little heart problem and and make a long story short it was just it was just easy for the docs to do so they did it they fixed a little valve in there now I'm going the next day I'm going I said Lord why didn't you allow me to to participate in that healing why why didn't she get healed it's such a small thing for you to do you know what the Holy Ghost said to me said you need to pray more in the Holy Ghost I'm telling you, we were on a 13-hour drive. We were about three hours into it, and I get praying in the Holy Ghost like never before. I began to hear like never before, build yourself up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. You want to move in faith? Then you're going to have to start praying in the Holy Ghost. Huh? You're going to have to go spot an a prate yourself. You're going to have to set some goals for yourself. Huh? You think we have in revival because people read the Bible for one hour a day. It's all it takes to get in, get in through the Bible 90 days. People are, <laughs> man, I can't believe it. Pastor's really putting this on us now. We got to read the Bible a whole hour. I mean, you know, of course, nobody's really saying that. I'm just kind of being dram- dramatic about it all. But, you know, I, I feel that that's basically about where most folks are. You know, on average basis in the Christian world, community. Now we start talking about praying and all goes, oh, my goodness, he's laid, oh, boy, he's laid it upon us. I mean, it's a more than we can bear. Uh, oh, we got to read the Bible for an hour. We got to pray in the Holy Ghost all day long. And ain't nobody can do that. I heard a guy say, I, he, I, I was talking about praying, find a prayer, uh, a place of prayer for an hour a day. He said, come on, let's be honest. It's hard to get through 30 minutes. <laughs> uh, it was hard for him. He's talking to the wrong person. You talking wrong about the king. I know how to get cured of that problem. Start fasting and praying. Because fasting will help you get your will under control. It'll help you understand, wait a minute, you don't just do anything. You just don't do something because it's something ground. <laughs> you don't just do something because you had a little desire or a pull to do it. You disciplined. You, your will gets consecrated to God in a way. That it's like no other. Because Father's right there saying, look at that, man. There's somebody who's yielded to me. Somebody's willing to go all the way with me. Hey? And then in, and then, and then that place, you find that wonderful rest and prayer. Uh, you find, you begin to find, hey, you know what Jesus said? I have meat to eat. I have bread to eat or food to eat that you know not of. Doing the will of Father. My goodness. Last Sunday, I'm telling you. I mean, it wasn't last Sunday. It was Sunday before last, last. I think we went to like 2.30. Huh? Wasn't that about it? No. Or, and then we went to the baptism. Right? I was so raptured in heaven. Is there, huh? 
You don't even think about food. Have you, has that ever happened to you? You don't, even, you don't even think about it. The time just flew by. You're over in the realm of glory. People, you don't die and go to heaven. You get redeemed and go to heaven. You don't die and go to heaven only. You get redeemed and go into heaven. You step over and the, the realms of the spirit is the same equivalent to the realms of heaven. And in a difference. We've been translated out of the kingdom of this world into the kingdom of the dear son. We don't recognize it. We don't know it. We don't understand it. The Holy Ghost has come to lead us, to guide us into all truth. Look at that verse of Scripture. Look at this with me. Is this a reality in your life or is this a verse of Scripture? The Word of God is trying to tell us what is happening so that we will believe it, hook up our faith with Him and do it. Not just, oh, well, I know where that verse of Scripture is. So what? What are you doing with it? He says, when the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak of himself. Whatever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you the things that are to come. He will glorify me. He will receive what I have. And he will reveal it, disclose it, transmit it, show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore, I said, he's going to take everything that I have. And he's going to show you everything that I'm doing. He's going to show you everything that belongs to me. Look, God made us his heirs. That means he puts us in a position to do on his behalf those things that he does. If Father himself was walking around and he saw somebody demon-possessed, we know what he would do. Jesus showed us what he would do. Jesus said, look, I'm showing you everything that the Father is doing. Philip, have you seen me? You've not seen the Father. He's saying, I want you to know I am here doing exactly what the Father himself would do if he were here. Now, you're going, I'm going to go away, and I'm going to empower you to do exactly the same things that I did. You're going to do them as my covenant partners, and Father's going to make you an heir. Where is my book on unlimited authority of the believer? Somebody get it for me quickly. The Lord, I just recently did a book, and it's very important for you to read it. It's the unlimited authority of God. It's the authority that, the, that God has given to the believer. And one of the chapters in the book is the authority of sonship. You think about this authority of sonship. Think about it from Galatians chapter 4. He says, you're no longer like ser servants. You're no longer like children. Everybody wants to be a child. Oh, I'm just a child. Listen, you need to grow up. Huh? If you are, listen... If you were 30 years old walking around saying you a baby, people would think you nuts. <laughs> Are you listening to me? Somebody said, how old I am? I said, how, how, long, how long have you been saved? When did you get saved, baby? 1980. What, 1980, what day? <laughs> huh? <laughs> no, she's, just, she's got to hit the anointing. It has nothing to do with forgetting. Wow, that's Huh? Everybody thinks it's just all in memory. No, it's called a realm of glory. Hey, what time was it? Around 7 o'clock. Around 7 o'clock on what day? Tuesday night. Tuesday night on what day? Tuesday. What was the day? November the 11th. November the 11th, Tuesday, right around 7 o'clock, 1980. That's how old she is. That's how old she is. Hey, how old are you? People want to just try to escape it. They want to try to escape responsibility. Look at what the disciples were doing after three years of being with Jesus. And he said, I'm going to give you an expedited program. I'm going to make it faster for you. That's pretty radical, ain't it? Then we need to get serious with God. Quit patty caking around, diddle dallying around. Huh? Shucking and jiving, ducking and diving. You know what I'm saying? Huh? Are you listening to me? There's a chapter in here. I'm in the authority of God. This is, the word, the, this is the word the Lord gave me for the nation of Nepal because he said, told me the nation of Nepal stands at crossroads of the world. China's getting ready to build. The Lord showed me that before I knew that China was building a superhighway into India right across Nepal. I actually went. <laughs> the road actually goes right down the backyard of Sudeep's place. Sudeep's place. Sudeep's uh, orphanage. Those you been to Sudeep's orphanage? The road goes right down in his backyard. That's how, that's how wild all this connection was. I didn't even know. I knew there was a superhighway. The Lord, I didn't know there was a superhighway. The Lord told me it's, Nepal would be the crossroads of the world. By 2020, the majority of the world will live in China and India. The Lord told me, he told me what he was going to do with the nation in Nepal. You know, and, and so I, one day I was listening. I was talking. I was preaching, rather. 
and I was listening to the Holy Ghost at the end of the meeting, and I thought I saw somebody, well, I saw somebody in a vision with no ears. And I thought, my goodness, I don't see anybody in this place with no ears. I thought, Lord's get ready to heal somebody that is deaf on the web. And the Lord spoke to me and said, no, this is what you speak to Nepal. And the Lord dropped this into my spirit. And these are just my, these are my notes. If you've not read this, you need to. There's something wrong with you. I'm just going to tell you straight up, there's something wrong with you. If you haven't read this, there's something seriously wrong with you. You say, well, I, I see they got 20 bucks on it. You say, I can't afford it. Well, R R Randy will sponsor you. you. Say, Randy, just let me borrow $20 to have the thing. So that I can read about the, 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 the authority of sonship. The fact that God's made me an heir and a co-inherited with Jesus. I'm no longer a child differing no more from a servant. Now I'm a son. The authority of sonship. Is that radical or what? Is that radical or what? Three people go, duh. <laughs> Jesus. I can tell you that you're real ferocious about the whole thing. Come on, man. Ain't nothing going to happen until you get radical about it all. I guarantee you try out for a football team like that. <laughs> or, or you try out for a sudden sports activity. It's like, you know what? You need to go back. You're in the wrong. Yeah. Uh, basket weaving is three more doors down. <laughs> three down. Three doors. Oh, crochet knitting. The three, fourth door down. This is a, come on, man. Hallelujah. This is a place for the desperate. This is a place for the mighty. Amasa kere nasi day. These are, these are, this is a place, look, listen, what will happen is the things going after things in the world will steal your affections from God. Listen to me. I'm going to tell you again. This is why the church is stuck in the, in the, in the United States of America and the Western world. Because when your affections are being captivated by things of this world, it's stolen away from God. Covetousness, idolatry takes a hold of you. Watch out. Watch out now. I know what I'm talking about. I'm warning you, I'm telling you, because I love you, because there's a call of God upon your life, and you're going to get spoiled. you got to have grab hold of yourself. Just begin to say, look, wait a minute, I know what my life is all about. Number one, my life is about walking this thing out in the Spirit, being continually filled with the Spirit. One, number one, my life is about in a, being in a communication with the Holy Ghost where He's teaching me how to walk out the life and ministry of Jesus, where He's teaching me how to conduct myself according to the will of the Father. People can pray all they want, oh God, thy will be done. And until you activate in a fellowship with the Holy Ghost and do it God's way, all you're doing is playing patty cake religion, pretend. It's tea time, but it's a tea time without, it's a tea time without anything in the little cups and no cookies on the little plate. <laughs> Hallelujah. Father's here and you're not going to be disappointed. All you got to do is say, I'm going to take a hold of these things. And the Spirit, listen to what Jesus said over here. Look what Jesus said over here. Jesus said in, in, in Acts chapter 1, verse 5, he said, Jesus said, you be baptized the Holy Ghost. Not many days from now. Now look over here in chapter 2, verse 1. What happened when they were baptized in chapter 2, verse 4? What happened when they were baptized? What happened when they were baptized? What happened? The scripture says they were filled. 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 Wow, man, we are, we are really making some advancements here in a, an understanding of the Word of God. Now we realize baptized is equivalent to filled. A whole bunch of theologians don't even know that. A whole bunch of theologians don't, because they don't want to know nothing about baptism. That sounds like you no longer alive, in control. You no longer live for yourself. You live for someone who bought you, paid for you, has a bill of sale over you, which you vowed to follow with all your heart and all your soul. To no longer do your own will, to do His. That was the covenant. Baby's happy. She likes every bit. She got a big smile on her face and a new tooth in her mouth. Look 
Kusha, Papra Makesi. It's good, it's good that you have people around you and know how to run the devil off, speak faith into your spirit, and stir you up concerning these things. Paul, Peter said, as long as I'm in this tabernacle, I'll do my, I'll give myself to bringing you in, into remembrance of these things. Amen. Amen. Come on now. Come on now. This is why you need to be in church every night so you can remember, because your forgetter is just overwhelming. You're re you're you remember. And God wants you to remember to be more effective than your forgetter. You're in charge of your forgetter. Holy Ghost is in charge of your remember. He brings all these things into your remembrance. However, if you're not listening, you're not going to remember nothing. If you don't know how to hear him, you're you are in charge of the forgetter. All you're going to do is forget. Oh, you might remember a bunch of stuff that the devil said. Some bad negative thing that somebody said, or whatever, you know, man said. But, you know, these things of the Lord will be aloof and absent from us in this world. Think about this. Think about this. Ruth Yana asked me an insightful question one day. She said, Dad, why is it that when people give themselves over to the, the, uh, the occult, to a satanic thing, witchcraft thing and stuff, why is it that they can get into this stuff and they, they advance quickly in it? They just are overwhelmed in it. But when people step into the things of God, it, they, it's just a slow train to hardly anywhere. Why is it they just drag their feet? Why is it, is it constant like pulling, a, pulling? I mean, the cow got stuck up to its belly in the mud. Why is it always like that, pulling the cow out, stuck up to its belly in the mud? And on a Sunday morning to boot. Guys, we're going to be with the service here in just a few minutes as soon as we get everybody out of the mud. Everybody gets stuck overnight. They're exhausted trying to get out. And if we don't get them out now, they're going to die or something's going to eat them. So we had to postpone the meeting. We'll get everybody out of the mud. Now we're... Okay, I'm not going to go with that too much more. But at any rate, I said just imagine this. Imagine this. Imagine if every, every song we heard, if every billboard we saw... If every, if every film we watched, if every commercial we saw and was encountered, if everybody around us was talking about the great things of the kingdom of God. Imagine what it's going to be like in the millennial reign. Everybody's talking about, wow, did you see that miracle? Whoa, it's glorious interacting with the Holy Spirit. The news comes on. Hey, 50 people just was raised from the dead. That was the way things were. Then you would advance quickly because in that environment, see, in the environment of the early church, what was, what was the environment of the, little, the early church? Well, everybody who believes cast out devils. Everybody who believes speaks in tongues. Everybody who believes has power to take up serpents, drink any deadly thing, it won't hurt them. You guys are immune to it all. Because remember, that's how assassins killed people. That's how... You would get assassinated or if somebody wanted to destroy you, that's what they did. They poisoned you or sit up. That was the big thing that they did was put a, put a snake in underneath your bed. Don't worry about the assassin's poison or the assassin's serpent. And whoever you lay hands on, they recover. That's just common stuff for the church. How is it that when you come together, every one of you have the tongue, interpretation, every one of you have a revelation? That's just the church. You got everybody around you flowing in the gifts of the Spirit. Everybody around you, everybody in charge of the church was doing miracles, signs, and wonders. What an environment. Now, if you start speaking in tongues, most of religion will rise up and say, that, that's passed away. You can't do that. Oh, I don't believe the miracle happened. Ah, the psychosomatic. Now, here's where we're at. Surrounding us is every demonic influence. Every billboard is a demonic influence. Every, every, it's, it's either about you getting some money, you getting something, something, something new, you, you having something more, uh, having, you know, it's about money or it's about, you know, some kind of immorality. Everywhere you look, there's this influence of the prince of the power of the air. Well, God's given you and I the ability to redeem that. To stop that. To throw it back. Paul, Paul turned the world upside down. He went into Ephesus 
And they had worshipped Diana for more than a thousand years in that city. He turned the place to Jesus. With signs and wonders, miracles by himself. Think about it, people. We sit around and think it's good enough because we finally made it. We made it to the church. The pastor ought to be really happy with us. I can't imagine if he's not happy with us about making it to church tonight. I'm telling you right now, I'm not going back. I mean, he needs to be appreciative of the fact that we showed up, even though we were frowning and looking like we were sick. I mean, no, no. It's the reality of it is my job, my job is to perfect you. I'm getting up in your business, and I'm going to do some perfecting because that's what God told me to do. My job is to build you up. Bill, I'm talking about it. get you to the point where you just know you've got to get your, drag yourself out there and get to work in the kingdom of God, flowing in the anointing, casting out devils and raising the dead. That's my job for the work so that you do the work of the ministry. This is what Papa told us to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> This happens to me. I'd be in the most peculiar company you can imagine. And I'm just going down the road, riding in the car with them. People don't even know anything about God. And I'm just, because I'm just naturally here. They'll be talking. I was been in cars with people talking about, you know, and genetics and molecular biology or whatever. And I'm just sitting over there. All of a sudden, I just get the pocasita masa tonga le parada de fitiela You know, it's just not about kisana name that it Just kind of look out the window. Bolsa prama mind available. And then, then I get interrupted. Well, what language is that? Oh, that's my heavenly language. Well, that's beautiful. I never had a person lost tell me, that's weird. Everybody says, that's beautiful. How do you do that? Well, first thing is you got to be born of the Spirit to do that. Are you ready? Huh? Now, religious people, they, they're going to jump out. They'll jump out the window. <laughs> they'll, they'll, they'll open the door and jump out the car, even if you're going 70 miles down the road, because it's an outbreak of hell. Just an outbreak of hell just happened. No. <laughs> Jesus, help us. Girasatakanamaya. Satan knows what that's all about. That's the ministry of the glory of God coming out by the power of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> that's you getting trained how to live and think and move and act according to the Spirit of God where you're grieved over sin, where you're excited about righteousness and Him living within. I'm telling you, where you know things before they happen, where the word of knowledge is activated, discerning of spirits causes you to understand you want nothing to do with the devil. Listen to me. It's good preaching. Yeah, it is. Hallelujah. Non gaseke, because that's the preacher. Ha redeems the times for the day is evil. Be filled with the Spirit. So therefore, if, if, I, if I'm listening to Ephesians chapter 5 now, if I'm over here listening to Ephesians chapter 5, and now I've got it squared away what it means to be filled. Ha, <laughs> ha, I got a New Testament revelation of what it means to be. I got a New Testament revelation directly from Jesus Christ himself that the Holy Ghost is going to come and he's the one's going to send them and he's the one who's going to administer the baptism. Who, who is who in here I baptized last Sunday? Notice I held you down. I slammed you down in the water and then I held you under. Ha! Jesus Come slam me down in the water and he's uh, down in the Holy Ghost and I'm happy to stay here. I just open up my lungs and breathe. Sink to the bottom and breathe. <laughs> Come on now, listen to me. I got a revelation that the Holy Spirit himself, that God is a living God, that he, he's a very present God. Listen. You cannot please God without faith. If you come to God, you must believe that he exists. Not somewhere far, far away. He exists. He's right here. He exists. He exists. 
Not some, not some, you know, entity somewhere, some, some pre-being, some whatever. He's here, right here. He's living, very present God. He's right here. One day the Lord, I said, Father, show me how to, show me how to touch the realms of the kingdom. I want to know how to touch the realms of the kingdom. Spared, the Lord said to me, he said, he said, reach out your hand. I was laying in my bed talking to the Lord. He said, put your hand out. I put my hand out, and I put my hand into a whole other realm. And I was sitting there getting zapped with the glory of God. I was sitting there, I'm, I'm telling you right now, I was shaking. My whole being was shaking the power of God. I pulled my hand back, and I was just, it was, everything was normal. And the, 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 the Spirit of the Lord just began to show me how close heaven is. We, we think it's, there's these big gigantic transitions. The only transition that has to happen is the new birth. The only transition that has to happen is being born of the Spirit. Jesus said this. He said, you can't understand the kingdom of God until you're born of the Spirit. You can't enter into this realm. People just think, well, we're talking about uh, the kingdom of God with respect when we die and go to heaven. You die in Christ Jesus and go to heaven. You get translated in the kingdom of dear son, Colossians 1, 13. We translated over into a realm where he lives in us and we live in him. Jesus says, I'm inviting you. Come dwell with me. Come live in my house. And there's, look, in his house there is no sadness. You have to go outside. In his house there is no pain. You've got to go outside. In his house there is no affliction. You've got to go outside. That's, is that pretty radical or what? Uh, but I don't want to go outside. Good. Now be filled with the Spirit. Speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns. And spirits of songs and singing and making melody in my heart. My dad used to tell me about a, tell me a story about a woman he knew with a big old huge golder, uh, quarter, quarter. And uh, the Lord healed her one day. Everybody else could see it, but she couldn't see it. And she would say, it's just, just go, oh, it's so glorious to finally be delivered of that ugly thing off my neck. And people would go, it's still there. She would go, no, it's not. She could see it, she couldn't feel it. My mother, well, one day, and one day it happened that everybody else could, couldn't see it and couldn't feel it either. My mother had a brain hemorrhage. When she had the brain hemorrhage, of course, in her head, a major blood vessel exploded in her head. God totally healed her. She was not supposed to live. And if she lived, she'd be a vegetable. And then that for a short time. God completely raised her from the dead. It was about, about 30 years later, they did an MRI because she got in an automobile accident and the doctors were stunned because it looked like that that blood vessel was still, still torn as though it was actually exploded in there. Pretty radical, huh? Oh, there was a guy um, my father used to tell me about because it was a great revival in the 47, 48, 49, 50, 51. A guy who had a glass eye. And the Lord gave him his sight back in his eye. His glass eye. He could take the glass eye out and it was an empty hole, and he could see perfectly out of it. People would cover up the eye. No trick, was it? No trick. People would cover up the eye in the meeting. He would read things off. People would just, ah, oh, that's, wow. Just totally impressed. And it's impressive to see somebody reading perfectly 20-20 vision out of an eye that doesn't have an eyeball. It happened. It was signs and wonders. It went on. These things really went on. My dad knew the person. Think about it. Are you listening to me? It's pretty radical stuff. Father can do whatever he wants to do. Oh, he's got to have an eyeball there. Got to have all these various things. No, he doesn't have nothing there. He doesn't have to have any, anything there. You're far more than a physical entity. You're a spiritual being. There's something far more to your existence than all these things, all these mechanistic ideologies about your physiological chemistry and your biochemistry and, and your physiology. Far more th there's far more to you than all of that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> The Bible wants to introduce you to it, and you had to get to know the Holy Ghost. 
I don't care. Listen to me. If you don't excel, you're supposed to excel. When you it's supposed to excel. But I'm gonna tell you right now, all you gotta do is start giving yourself to that, praying in the Holy Ghost, and you're gonna excel one way or the other, because Father's not gonna allow it to be something that's not real. It's gonna get real if it ain't real to start with. You had to get real quick. As soon as you start pressing in, saying, Father, I want these things, because you can't ask him for bread and end up with a stone. You can't ask him for an egg and end up with a scorpion. You can't ask for a fish and end up with a snake. You can't. You can't. You can't. Papa's not going to do it. You can't ask God to send us fire, baptize you in the Holy Ghost and fire. You know what? I, when Ann and I said about three weeks ago, four weeks ago, we said, Father, we want you to ratchet up the fire in the place. People still sneaking around. I want you to make manifest. So we got into a prayer. We got into this. Ann and I get into some prayer that will wake us up at night. We get up. We, we both wake up. I go, I go, are you awake? She said, yes, I'm awake. I said, we might as well get up and pray. Let's do it. That's good. I'm, I'm burdened anyways. And man, I tell you, Ryan, there's some, something effective about praying 3 o'clock in the morning for the fire of God to fall on your church. Father, I don't want nobody sneaking around. I want everything to get manifest. I don't care how ugly it looks. I don't care how messy it looks. Just, just do it. I just want your fire to burn. I want your glory to be made manifested. I'm tired of people sneaking around in sickness, sneaking around in disease, and sneaking around in sin and iniquity. Playing around with you, acting like it's okay when it's not okay. Let's get this thing done. Come on now. You should be praying that over yourself. We pray that over our lives. God, let your fire burn in our life. Yeah. Fuck, send your fire, Father. Let your fire uh, burn up everything around us, oh God, that is not of you. We want nothing in our lives that are not, is not of you. Holy Ghost, overwhelm us with your glory. Fill us with your presence. Because once you get into this realm, you don't want anything else. This is what it's all about. See, Jesus died so that we might have the life of God. And the life of God came to us by way of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit brought us the very life of God. He's the living presence of God. See, the body is dead without the Spirit. <laughs> and the Holy Ghost had come filled us with resurrection life. Um, uh, the inward brought us to Poya, resurrection, so that our spirits now joined under His Spirit. And when your spirits joined under his, his Spirit, you one spirit with the Lord. I'm one spirit with the Holy Ghost. Is that radical? I'm one, I feel what He feels. Hallelujah. He never felt any discouragement. So if I feel any, I say, You foul thing, get away from me. You messing around up here. Right. He never felt anything but joy and peace and love and goodness and gladness. I don't so therefore I don't pray, I don't participate with things that don't belong to him. And and we're here to we're here tonight to tell you you're not supposed to either. I want you to look with me in Ephesians chapter five. I want you to look here now. I want you to stare at this. I want you to recognize that this is what God's called you to do. So the Lord says, He tells us in verse 14, He says, what He says, Wake up. That's the awakening. Are you with me? Wake up. Who needs an awakening? A sleeping church. How do you define a sleeping church? Can't respond to the Holy Ghost. Can't, can't, can't feel the, the unction. You can have people up there flowing in the, in the gifts of the Spirit, and all they're doing is going, wow, amazing. What's next? What are we having for dessert? Rather than actually feeling the miracle power surging to their beings because they're hooked up with it, they're connected with it. They're part of the operation of the Holy Ghost. Nothing happens in the church that you don't feel the expression of it because you're awake. You're alive unto God. You're not dead. You've been born of the Spirit. You, you, those gifts of the Spirit are activated in you. The way that we learn how to fun function and flow in the Spirit is actually hooking up while somebody else is moving in the gifts of the Spirit. We're receiving, we're feeling that. I mean, you know, you see me model it for you when, like, just like when, 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 I give an example, when John, when Tim was praying for John, I said, there it is. And as soon as I said, there it is, Tim felt it and John felt it. We all felt it at the same time. I just verbalized it for the sake of people sitting around me. I wanted them to know you can really feel this. 
I wanted everybody to see. You could really feel this. You could feel it activated. I don't have to be laying, on my hand, laying my hands on being the one ministering to be a part of it. We want you to be a part of it. But unless you give yourself over to the activity of the Holy Ghost, pray it in the Holy Ghost, that's the entrance gift, gift into all the other gifts. And if you're just every once in a while giving a, course, uh, a place to the, the water courses of the Holy Ghost, you're not going to be very sensitive at all. Because it's not very valuable to you. These things aren't very valuable to you. Baptism in the Holy Ghost, rivers flowing out of your innermost being, is primarily found in, in, and discovered in the expression of tongues. People don't like to hear that, but it's true. Now, before I show you this verse of Scripture, I'm going to go back to John chapter 7. I'm going to show you this. Then we'll come back to Ephesians 5, and I'll tell you what I want to tell you there. That the, okay, so you go over with me to John chapter 7, okay? And then you look here in, in verse 38 and, and verse 37. Jesus said in the last day, day of the feast, Jesus stood and said, If any man thirst, let him come down to me and drink. He, he said, to believe, He that believes on me, as the scripture says, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Now look at this. Look at this. But this spake he of the Spirit, the Holy Ghost, which was not yet given... This is this make ye of the Spirit, which they, had, they that believed on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. Are you, are you seeing that? Do you see that? See that? Now I want you to quickly look over here to Acts chapter 2 with me real quickly. Go to Acts chapter 2. Look over here in verse 33 with me. Okay, Acts chapter 2, verse 33. Okay. Now look at here. Verse 33. Therefore... Jesus being by the right hand of God, exalted, huh? And having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, exalted, what does that mean? It means he's glorified now. He's glorified now. Jesus having been exalted and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost has shed forth this which you see and hear. And what was it that they were seeing here? Seeing and hearing. They were looking back over. If you forgot what they were seeing and hearing, all you got to do is look back over here, verse 8, and how, how and how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born. They look back up here. They were all speaking. They all spoke in the Holy Ghost at the same time. Right there. there look, verse, verse 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit, all of them, as the Holy Ghost gave them utterance. And, and what do people think? They, what did they think? The multitude was confounded. They were all amazed. They said, how is it, in, how is it these guys are uh, speaking in our tongue to where we can understand them? And, they be, and others were mocking, said these men are filled with new wine. They're drunk. Peter standing up amidst them saying, you know, we are not drunk as you suppose. Huh? You're listening to me. So when he said, this is that what you're seeing, hearing. What were they doing? Now, there are all 120 people. Give, give this with me. There's 120 people. Say, Now, everybody, come on. Just pray in the Holy Ghost. Okay, one person in the back speaking Spanish. Everybody keep going. Keep going. One person in the back speaking Spanish. You couldn't hear that person speaking in Spanish. You come on. This is miracle. This is a miracle. 120 are speaking an unknown tongue. It was a Holy Ghost translation device that caused 3,000 men to hear in their own language. Come on. It was a miracle. We want to make it natural. It was a miracle. Everybody heard at the same time the, everybody speaking in the, their native tongue. When there was nobody speaking in their native tongue, they were speaking in a heavenly tongue. Are you listening to me? Try to. Are you listening to me? Good. I don't want you to get distracted. I want you to do this. I wish I could come over tomorrow and just monitor you. And just look at you and go, huh? I just do, I just look at you do a Jack Cole all day. My God, what's wrong with you people? Huh? Jack Cole. My God, what's wrong with you people? Huh? People need to have that on their phone. When the phone ringer goes off, my God, what's wrong with you people? Just to have a reminder. Just to have a reminder. 
God, you got the, God the Holy Ghost with you and in you. And what are you doing? What are you pursuing? You could be pursuing the depths of the Spirit. You could be flowing in a realm of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> you could be receiving that ministry of Jesus. What is the ministry of Jesus? What is the ministry of Jesus? To receive the things of the Holy Ghost, because that's what he's doing. He's come to baptize us. His ministry is to baptize us in the Holy Ghost and fire. So if Jesus is ministering to us, what is he ministering? The Holy Ghost. When, when the Holy Ghost is, 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 is moving in our life, what is he doing? He's glorifying Jesus. Hey? He's revealing Jesus. He's glorifying Jesus. He's revealing what Father's doing. Oh, hallelujah. Wow, I'm getting worn out trying to tell you people about this. This is exhausting. Huh? It's like pulling that cow out of the mud. Come on, Sadea. Come on, Carasa Peronita. Come on. See, most of, what I, most of what I hear is somebody who's prayed in the Holy Ghost about five minutes today. And that was in the meeting. That's most of what I hear. Because you can, there's depths to it. There's depths. There's depths and there's diversities. Okay? There, there's the startup tongue that, uh-oh. <laughs> We're not ready. It's kind of the emergency tongue trying to get you get the engine cranked. Huh? Trying to get things cranked over. Trying to get things stirred up, moving. And then, boom, you finally hit a realm. We want you to get in that realm, stay in that realm. Hallelujah. And, act, and basically, somebody said, oh, I can remember when I was first baptized in the Holy Ghost. Uh, I lost the English language. You should lose the English language every day. Now, I'm getting, I'm getting here's, here's what I'm getting. All these various different expressions. So, and I even get this one. You should, I would really, I would really love to have, I would just, I would love to have somebody who's really good with a camera to zero in on each person's face as a decoupage and have it up there on a big screen so that everybody could see my response and you'd be going, whoa. You know what you would do? You would say, I'm changing my look. That was a weird look. That was a weird look I had. Uh, you've seen yourself on TV, haven't you? You go, man, I look weird. <laughs> uh, listen, dear people, we want you to get overwhelmed with the glory of God. There's something far better than makeup. Huh? There's something far better than fixing yourself up. Huh? There is a glory of God that will come upon you in a majesty and a beauty of heaven that will shine in your life. Is an entrance, entrance way into it. It's totally spiritual. You don't understand anything about it. It's a total. Turn me up. Nobody can hear me. Rabba <laughs> is purely a Holy Ghost realm where God teaches us how to talk out of a heavenly realm. So I said, where did you learn how to talk like that? Where did you learn how to talk like that? Here, would you like me to show you? 
Where did you learn how to lay hands on the sick and they recover? Where did you learn how to prophesy? Where did you learn how to pray? Where did you learn how to preach? Where did you learn how to function in word of knowledge? This is true. Somebody said, well, they didn't speak in tongues in the Old Testament, and they healed somebody. <laughs> well, buddy, uh, newsflash, we're not in the Old Testament, first and foremost. And uh, another, another point, one prophet every hundred years. One guy, one, one, one that got to do something in the kingdom about every hundred years. One. Hello. Now you're in the New Testament. Everybody gets to be anointed. He yeah. pours out his spirit upon all flesh. He gives everybody divine power. He gives everybody in a special dimension of grace to function in an unlimited authority of the spirit. Well, okay. Well, what do we got to do? Simple. Get baptized in the Holy Ghost. Well, what does that look like? <laughs> And then a I'm doing my barakea. I'm tramokea. I'm tramokea. I say, oh, she alamaya. I'll say, oh, she be. I'm tramokean. I'm Jane Bruana. I say, okay, no moan. Erezande, alamo, yeshiane. Erezutai. Oh, ha. Maya, ha. Who? Muya, say, oh. Muya, say, oh. Mu, ma. Mu, bane, su, ru, hu, 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 me, who, kaye, maneke, you, ha, no, shake, na, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, I am a told in air, I'm on go resina, air in the mind, they will shake with Uli, ha, 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 Livery body, I do you who rub a say, tay a fee, a key, a tie, a fuss, a tie, a ra ha 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 ha. Era mangayo, say, Calomo. Haramandea, Halamon J. Recito. Now I'm telling you, I'm doing to my very body. Say, Kodamaya. Say, Kodamaya. Very shikaya. I must say, to Ramange. Omangayli, she can't know the I'm Drew Sona. Ah, here so he, I'm already, Jesus, Monday, the back of song, lay, Miranda, Bosiviti, the bone, Bolon, bone, the bear, and a, Ekashino, Mokiti, Hallelujah, Ekashila, Mokotina, Ekashula, Mokia, Nakea, Ali, Mongea, Ha, 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 Hallelujah, Ha, 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 Hallelujah. Brena, Hela. Hela, Mala, Hela. Hela, Bodataya. Ko, Sande, Po, Ke, Kande, Ke, Koto. Ha, 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 ha. 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 Ha, ha, ha.
Malande Rasate, Malatakai, Maya, Deere Baya say, Manjeko, Manjeko say Teo Te. Well, now, 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 I have been doing my best to speak English. I have not been trying to just speak in a heavenly language. It is a force. I am now trying to speak only in English at this moment. Nikara City Elana Makata Hallelujah. Ha ha Hallelujah, bro. Bear it all. Hey, uh, Nagel to see you too. Hallelujah. Ha. Ah. Well, now, 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 you, do, you just think about this. Jesus said he wants you to do the works he said he's, you're supposed to do the works that he did. How are you going to do them? He told you to do signs, wonders, miracles, cast out devils. Let's see you do it. You can't do that. Not unless you're under the control and authority of the Holy Ghost. You might not notice this, but people who don't flow in the Holy Ghost don't do miracles. <laughs> people that just sit around, all they do is teach you Bible stories. They just teach you Bible stories. Bible story, Bible story, Bible, 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 talking heads. Bible story, Bible story. No power. Nobody got healed. No miracle took place. No signs, no wonders. And, but yet Paul and everybody who preached in the New Testament did signs and wonders and miracles. So we must have a different kind of a gospel than they had. We must be doing a different kind of church than they did. Not me. No, no, me. I mean, I'm not going to go to Ephesians yet. Because I want to go so. I want to go so. I want to go to Sukaniah, Sirkanur, Fridisuri. I want you to do this to my. Oh, God. <laughs> Listen. Uraman they say, I don't know what can I say. Now, here's the problem. There's no, there's no what can I say. In, there's no what can I say. Hallelujah. See, now, let me just say this to you. This is a beautiful realm. You know what? This is where you live free from sin. You know what? This is where you live free from sickness. You know what? This is where you live free from unforgiveness. You know what? This is where you live burden-free, blessed life. This is where you get to hear the Holy Ghost tell you what to do next. This is where you get filled with all whole kinds of holy emotions. This is where everybody can hate you and you stand there laughing. Huh? Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, this is where, hallelujah. This is where they can all be stoning you and you looking up into heaven. I see Jesus. You know, standing at the right hand of the Father. But I want what you see. Oh. ひかにしフェストモリタンギシモキキネカフェストモリタンギシモキキネカフェストモリタンギシモキキネカフェストモリタンギシモキキネカフェストモリタンギシモキキネカフェストモリタンギシモキキネカフェストモリタンギシモキ
Mm. First, first, first Corinthians, she's chapter 12, verse 28. Hurry. 28, 28, 28, 28, 28. Now, now look, we're talking about the church, body Christ, what we're supposed to be doing. You ready? You ready? Here's what we're supposed to be doing. We're in a church. You ready? Everybody with me? You ready? Here we go. Here's what we're supposed to be doing. Here it is. And God said in the church, first apostles, secondly prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healing, helps governments and diversities of tongues. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Now, 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 now look over here. Look over here. Just back up for just a second. Back up for, I'm going to go forward just for a second. Chapter 14. Look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this. Verse 2, chapter 14, verse 1, verse, chapter, first, chapter 14, first Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2. It says this, he that speaks in the language speaks not unto men, but unto God. How be he speaks spirit? He speaks mysteries in the spirit. Listen, look at here, look, look at what's going on. Look at what Father is saying to us. Now, Paul lays out for us the very need for there to be prophecy so that people can be edified. There's a, there's a great need for people to hear the testimony of exactly what we're supposed to be doing in the language that they can understand. But people are hearing all kinds of language that they can understand and not doing nothing because the word can only take you just so far. The word introduces you to what you're supposed to be doing and God the Holy Ghost gives you the ability to, to do it. The Word comes and introduces you to what you're supposed to be doing. The Word is the door of the opportunity for you to step in to this realm of living. It's the Holy Ghost that empowers you to do it. It's the Holy Ghost that gives you to the... Now, 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 now. Look up, look here, look here. Paul goes through the argument that most people try to give, but they don't know what they're talking about. Because most people who try to explain 1 Corinthians chapter 14 have never experienced 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Most people who try to explain 1 Corinthians chapter 14, they never have had the heavenly language. And they're trying to tell you what the heavenly language is like, and they've never done it. So they don't know what they're talking about. Are you listening to me? So here's what the... I want you to see what Paul says here. I want you to see what Paul says to here. Here, you're listening? <clears throat> he says, he says, he says this. He says, let's just go ahead and look at uh, verse 15. He says, what shall we do then? He gives this whole explanation about how the tongues should be interpreted and how there should be prophecy. And, and then he gets to the point, you know, so that people can be edified and and how that when you pray in an unknown tongue, you're edifying yourself or building yourself up. How many of you think of you ought to be built up? You ought to be built up in the church. You ought to be built up in the church. So he's not saying you can't pray in the Holy Ghost because in the church because he says he's basically going to say forbid not to speak in tongues in the church. But look at what he says. What shall we say then? What are we going to do then? He says, I will pray with the Spirit. Now, he defined what it means to pray with the Spirit because he said when you pray with the Spirit, your understanding is unfruitful, didn't he? Didn't he say that? Wave at me if you know what I'm talking about. Because some of you have got a blank stare on your face. you got this, the screensavers on. <laughs> hit, hit a button. Hit a button. Come back. Okay. So, so, what should we do then? What, what, what do we do? We're going to pray in the Spirit. And then we're going to pray with the understanding also. So we're going to do that in the church? Okay, somebody said, somebody said, do you have your prayer language? My answer to that is, do you have your song language? Huh? Because we're going to sing in the spirit and we're going to sing with the understanding also. That's what we're called to do. And looky here, looky, what does what is, what is Paul go on to say? He says, else, he says, else, when you bless with the spirit, see the spirit, you're blessing with the spirit. Who are you blessing? Who are you blessing? God forbid anybody should bless the Lord in the midst of the church. Who are you blessing? He that speaks in unknown tongues speaks not unto man, but unto God. How be it? He speaks his, his mysteries in the spirit. What is the Lord teaching me how to do? He's teaching me how to give over my whole affections, my, my whole understanding, my whole, my whole activity of my being into the hands of the Holy Spirit so he can speak through me, so he can feel through me, so he can act through me, huh? so he can move through me. People, hello, 
Hello? When, 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 look. Baptism of the Holy Ghost finds its expression in tongues. And all other gifts as a result. Look at me. Look out here. Look here. Baptism in the Holy Ghost has an expression in tongues. Because hukuniah is a, is a direct expression that you have now hooked up with the Holy Ghost. And he's teaching you and training you. It's true. It's true. It's true. You're looking at me like I'm still stunned. And you've been hearing, some of you have been hearing it for more than 10 years. Some of you have been hearing it for 30 years and you're still stunned. It didn't take Paul 30 years to speak in tongues more than them all put together. Look, if Paul thought it was good, why don't we think it's good? Can, can anybody help me here? Paul really likes speaking in tongues. I wonder why. Huh? And then he, you know, he, he finds people like in Ephesus, sees them. First thing he says to them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? I say to people all the time, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? Yes, I have. You have. So can I hear your spirit pray? And then they look at me with this blank stare. Well, what do you mean? I say, what do you mean what I mean? <laughs> have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? According to the book of Acts chapter 2. When they were baptized in the Holy Ghost, they were filled with the Spirit, and they all began to speak with other tongues as the Holy Ghost gave them utterance. Oh, no, that's not happened. Well, then you've not been baptized in the Holy Ghost. What happens when you get baptized in the Holy Ghost, or what happens when you get filled in the Holy Ghost, when you're basically, when, 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 we, waste, when we find a place in the Scripture that, as I'm going to take you over to Ephesians chapter 5 here in just a minute, when you're being filled with the Spirit, what happens? What happened? Do you jump around? I'm filled with, I'm being filled with the Spirit. Oh, you jump around. What do you do? What do you do when you're filled with the Spirit? When you're being filled with the Spirit, you just like. What's going on? I'm being filled with the Spirit. What is happening when you're being filled with the Spirit? Does your Does your hand shake? What's going on? I'm being filled with the Spirit. What happens when you're being filled with the Spirit? Huh? What's going on? Oh, I'm being filled with the Spirit. <laughs> what happens when you're being filled with the Spirit? Well, when they were filled with the Spirit in Acts chapter 2, they all began to speak with other tongues as the Holy Ghost gave them utterance. Why does people want to change it? Why do people want to change it? Any praying in the Spirit, with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, why is it going to get changed in Ephesians 6 now? When Paul's the one who already defined what it meant to pray in the Spirit. Now you're going to get to Ephesians chapter 6 and you're going to say there's no more tongues? That's nonsense. That's a violation of the text. He didn't say pray with all prayer and supplication in your understanding. He said pray with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. He said that he that prays in unknown tongues speaks unto God. His Spirit praying. His understanding is unfruitful. His Spirit's praying. I can tell a lot about you. I'm going to get the microphone. I'm going to get the microphone. I'm going to walk around. I'm going to put this microphone in your mouth. And I'm going to say, pray in the Holy Ghost. And we're going to listen to it. So don't try to get all spiritual now because it's too late. <laughs> Some last moment revelation. Oh, I better get, I better get ready. Because he's going to stick that microphone in my, in my mouth. It sure as can be. You need to be ready. You need to be, you need to be filled. Because what does the Holy Ghost mean? You want to, you're going to get all ready for me? You need to get all ready for God. Yeah. You have more value, more respect, more concern about what people are going to think about you than what God is going to think about you. You need to understand the things of the Spirit. You need to get real. You need to have a transition from your earthly realm to a heavenly realm. You're more religious than you are relational. Listen, did you know that most people are more religious than they are relational? I can prove it. Huh? They're more religious than they are relational. Father wants us to be more relational than we are religious. The only good religion I know is go visit the widows in their affliction. Take care of the orphans. That's good religion. Huh? That's good religion. Take care of the poor, the orphans, the widows in their affliction. 
when we do that out of relationship. Hmm? See, let me just finish reading this to you. The scripture says, the scripture says there in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Now, if we would just, look, if I didn't have to deal with trying to bring everybody up to speed and have to then deal with people with bad attitudes and not participating, and sometimes I don't even care. Most of the time I don't even care. The only times I do care is I'm just trying to help people just pull the cow out of the mud. Because if you leave, leave, you there, leave you there overnight, the coyote is going to take your head off. Ain't nothing you do about it. You're stuck. You can't kick. You can't do nothing. Cows don't bite. You know what I'm saying? Horses bite. Cows don't bite. That. Okay. Now, that's it. That's the only reason I pay any attention to you. Because otherwise, I'm going to get lost in the Holy Ghost. I'm going to get lost in the Holy Ghost. Because I get lost in the Holy Ghost. You're, you, have, you know what? You're invited in. I don't have to party all by myself over here. I don't have to have a, I don't have to have a good time all by myself over here. Everybody's invited in. You don't have to stand there. Well, we went to the meeting night, watched the pastor go to heaven. It was quite amazing. My, he lost the English language, and then he started laughing. Then he started crying. Then he ran around the building. Then he started jumping and leaping up and down. Then he started prophesying. Man, it was amazing. Then he went out into a trance, saw a vision, got up, told us about it. It was amazing. No, that no, that's not what the church is. The church, the body of Christ, is supposed to be functioning in every manifestation of the Spirit. Because right there in that same chapter, if we would have read on down, if we just read on down in that same chapter, he says, the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every single person. And I want to read that to you. I want to read that to you. Okay, are you ready? You ready for this? Everybody ready for this? Go back to chapter 12. You've got to go back to chapter 12 to get this one. I mean, I want to help everybody. Okay? Verse 7. Okay? You with me? Verse 7. The manifestation of the Spirit is given to everybody. Is there, in, is there anybody who's not a part of the everybody? <clears throat> is there anybody here that's not in the category of everybody? Is there, are you with me? Everybody. No one's left out. Say, if you're one of the everybody, please raise your hand just so I can make sure that we're communicating because sometimes I'm lost. Okay. So, keep your hands up. Then you have to reckon with the reality that the manifestation of the Spirit is given to you right now. Then you have to reckon with the reality of why or what's going on that's keeping you from responding to Him. Perhaps. Because the manifestation of the Spirit is given to everybody. Now, if, he, if the Lord would have just left it there, we could have gone, whoa, what's that like? Could be, who knows? What is that like? But he's going to be very specific, right? Manifestation of the Spirit could be going and laying on the floor, just laying down. I'm not going to do it. But you with me. But we don't have to, we don't have to guess, do we? Look at here. Look at what the Scripture says. What does the Scripture say? For one is given the Spirit, by the Spirit, the word of wisdom. To another, the word of knowledge. To another, faith. To another, the gifts of healing. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. To another, interpretation of tongues. So this is what, what's happening. Where is this happening? In the midst of the church. That's what church is supposed to be about. Church isn't supposed to be about everybody sitting there going... And first of all, we open up the meeting, we have songs, we sing. Okay, well, I, I didn't really like those songs, so I couldn't enter in. But it really wasn't even about the song. It really wasn't about the song. It was about you making a connection in your relationship of yielding to the Holy Ghost. That's all it's about. And the Holy Ghost don't even care what's being sung. Because God's not impressed with adjectives. He's not impressed with adjectives. He's impressed with the heart. So you could just stand there and go, ah! It wouldn't be very, you know meaningful and nice to the person standing beside of you, but something, you know, just because God's, I mean, I'm just trying to make a point. It's not about the song. It's about your heart crying out to God. If you can join in the song and find a harmony, it would be a beneficial to all. But it's really not about the song. It's about your heart. It's about yielding to God. It's about the Holy Spirit fundamentally has come to empower us to worship in spirit and in truth, to worship. What does that look like? We define it in a very limited and narrow way. We define it as singing. Listen to me. 
Listen to me. That is not the fundamental biblical definition of worship. It is not. Fundamental definition of worship was to bring an offering. Leviticus chapter 1. The fundamental aspects of worship was found itself, it was discovered within the framework of, of coming and, and bringing an offering that represents yourself and turning yourself completely over to God. Turn yourself completely over to God with a burnt offering that represented you leaving a physical realm and being turned into smoke and going into the spiritual realm. Ultimately, we see a transition during the time of David where the priests were anointed to sing and worship the Lord and praise Him. Hallelujah. And, and, and now, ultimately, we're going to get over there and we're going to speak on this in just a few minutes about singing and making melody in your heart unto God with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. I just want to talk to you for just a minute, just a minute about psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. And once I, I want to talk to you about them, I, 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 it, it didn't say, it didn't say with CDs, dimmed lights, and incense, or whatever. Psalms, whatever it is that people do. Psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. God fill you with these things. He'll fill you with these things. People got to go in a room, they go in a room, and they get quiet. And here, here they are. They're in a room. That's nonsense, man. All quiet, all. What, what are you doing in there? Laying out? Oh, I'm soaking. No, you're an idiot. There's nothing to do with the Word of God. It's, I, I, do, I would almost coin it as witchcraft. It's nothing to do with God. The Holy Ghost makes intercession. The Holy Ghost prays. He makes petitions. He makes requests. It's a sound. It's a voice. It sounds like Scripture. He's praying according to the will of the Father. There is a crying forth concerning specific needs and issues. It's a bunch of nonsense. Don't you do it. In the, if you go to this church, don't you do that nonsense. If you do it, you're disobedient. And you're a rebel. And you're going to hell. How do you like that? You better obey your pastor. Hey? Eh? Yeah. Amen. Because I have the authority to tell you what to do. I do. I have the authority to tell you what to do. So you need to do it. You need to do it God's way. You need to give yourself to the things of the Spirit, what the Holy Ghost is doing, rather than what some model that never has resulted in any real spiritual meaningful growth in your life. Are you listening to me? This soaking nonsense is just simply nonsense. Laying out on the ground. And believe me, I stand in the company of many men of God who say, who just are, that are really opposed to some of these crazy things that are going on here in the United States of America these days. Don't get involved with that stuff. If it's written in the Word, then do it. Otherwise, just forget about it. I want to read this verse of Scripture to you because it's very important here in 1 Corinthians, I mean, forgive me, 1 First, First Corinthians chapter 14. I wanted to go on to... to um, Verse 16 says, Else when you bless with the Spirit, how shall he that occupies the room of the learned say amen at the giving, at your giving of what? What are you doing when you when you pray in the Holy Ghost? Wow, what a revelation. Well, I wonder what I was doing. I wonder what I was saying. You're giving thanks. You're giving thanks. You're giving thanks. Verse 17. For you verily give thanks well. In fact, it says, for truly, when you're praying in the Spirit, you're giving thanks excellently. Now, you, would you like to hear the kind of giving thanks that's actually going on? You ready? You ready? Just real quickly, turn back to Acts chapter 2, real quickly. This is Thanksgiving. I want you to help, I hope you understand how to give thanks. Okay? Acts chapter 2. Go back to Acts chapter 2. And they can... They, and you can hear what they were saying in the giving of thanks. See verse 11? They said everybody could hear them saying, speaking. They were giving thanks. And what were they saying? They, were, they could hear them speak in their own tongues the wonderful works of God. Giving thanks. 
thanking him for all of his wonderful works, thanking him for his mighty acts, thanking him for the, for the, for the stars and for the sun and for the food and for the Holy Ghost and for the Lord Jesus and for the pillow and for your bed and for your clothes and for all the great provision and for his protection and for his plentiful care and concern for your life for his keeping power hallelujah ha, for a strengthening power hallelujah and so what will happen when you begin to and then in you're going to go right on over in an Amosikai, in an Engalongosai, in English, and you're going, to begin to, you're going to give thanks in a more excellent way if you do now that same thing by the same spirit in the understanding. Go to Ephesians 5. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to, we're going to go ahead and pray in the Holy Ghost till like maybe 1 or 2 in the morning. See, it's just nobody has to go to work in the morning. Ah. <laughs> and we're just going to, like, get raptured out, translated to different countries. <laughs> Everybody's going to get healed. Amen. Hey? Somebody's going to get caught up in heaven like Mariah Wordworth Edder did that day when she was there preaching by the Spirit. And then she got froze for three days. While she was up in heaven, came back and took up where the sentence where she left off and thought she had just been interrupted for about a minute. Had a vision of heaven. Wow. Is that fairy tales? Is it fairy tales to have dreams and vision? Is it fairy tales for everybody to prophesy? Because when we go ahead and read, when we go ahead and read 1 Corinthians chapter 14 in this context, everybody's going to be prophesying one by one. But you know what? Where people forbid tongues, you don't hear any prophecy. Oh, they don't have any tongues because you can't have any tongues, not interpretation of tongues, but they don't have any prophecy either. You know why? Because they grieve the Holy Ghost. Because they grieve the Holy Ghost. And then prophecy, because they forbid tongues, grieve the Holy Ghost. They don't have miracles. They don't really even see people truly transformed by the power of God. They just see people come into the religious club. You listen to me. There's as much many people going out the back door. There's more people going out the back door than coming in the front. <laughs> and to stand and listen to me preach a sermon like this, or sit and listen to me preach a sermon like this, is more than the, the body can endure. Are you listening? When you're born again, the Spirit of God comes upon you and radically transforms you. You're not standing there looking around. Wondering your thoughts, when do we get to eat? When are they going to hand out the gifts? <coughs> when do I get the coupon to Walmart? Uh-oh. Everybody knows I'm telling the truth. I don't have to apologize to everybody watching me on the web. <laughs> Have you been in a Holy Ghost meeting lately where somebody got saved? Where they, where they came to repentance? See, the Lord didn't call people salvation. Did you know that? How many of you knew God didn't call nobody to salvation? A couple of people do. He called everyone to repentance. That's his message. Call anybody to salvation. Call everybody to repentance. What we got is everybody come, come to salvation. And call, God calls us to repentance. Transformation of life. A Holy, Ghost, a Holy Ghost comes upon us and gives us a, an overwhelming, He gives us an overwhelming touch from heaven to where we are truly ashamed and sorrowful for our sin, and sin becomes exceeding sinful. Somebody said, well, the law made sin exceeding sinful. Holy Ghost makes sin far more exceeding sinful than the, Holy Ghost, than the law could ever make the sin exceeding sinful. Can you hear me? Yes. I know I'm a, I can speak better in tongues right now. I'm more fluent there. The Holy Ghost makes sin far more exceedingly sinful than the law could ever make it. For He is a spirit of holiness. And what we have lost and what you and I need to begin to contend for is a Holy Ghost conviction that once existed in the church that if 
you know, I got pops to start talking about the Holy Ghost of conviction that used to be in the church when he first started preaching. It was a different realm. It was a different realm. We don't know how far we drifted. We don't know how far we've drifted. We just think it's okay because all we do is compare ourselves with people around us. But if you could be translated right now to 60 years ago in the church and you came back here, you'd go, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Something's different. Because the old guys said, what happened, what happened to Holy Ghost conviction in the church? Yeah, exactly. Okay, I'm going to go to this verse of Scripture. Everybody's starting to get grumpy. I'm going to go praying back and go back to praying in the Holy Ghost. We're going to give you a little bit more time. There was a time I knew my spirit. The Lord said, okay, now lay your hands on your kids. Command your kids to pray in the Holy Ghost. I waited for that time, that day. I remember that day. And we, and every one of them, at that moment, at that day, I sat them down in the living room, and every one of them got baptized in the Holy Ghost inside of a minute. Inside of one minute, everybody got baptized in the Holy Ghost. That's what's going to happen to Naomi and Anna one day. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So, I have many more things to say on this subject. But the Holy Spirit's going to have to, you're going to have to recognize this is what God wants for you, and you're going to have to be willing to say, this is what I want. I want that. I want to have that. I want that in my life. Mm -mm 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 Mm-mm-mm-mm. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -mm 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 -mm. It is a wonderful thing to mature in God. It is far more wonderful and amazing maturing in God than your natural maturity when you went through, you know, being a teenager and becoming an adult and all the thrills and, you know, changes that took place there. It is a wonderful thing to mature in God and discover His wisdom, His knowledge, His understanding, to, to have an ever-increasing manifest glory of His presence in your life. There's nothing so wonderful. It's a terrible thing and tragedy to see people stuck in the ditch of religion because in the ditch of religion, you don't get to mature. You stay just like you are. And that gets, that'll get you just downright cantankerous and irritable. Huh? It will. It's tough living in a ditch. Huh? A ditch is a grave with the ends kicked out. Right? Everybody listening to me? Yes. The Lord wants you to redeem the ta- times with the days are equal. So go over with me now to Ephesians. To that verse of Scripture I try to... Get into there. Hallelujah. (laughs) Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hidden in his presence, lovely. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. It's just, it's just a good place to live. Just to be in the heavenly realm where you're just happy, where there's peace, where now you can feel the comfort of the Holy Ghost and begin to give yourself to a deeper realm of His love. That's why God says build up yourself in the most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourself in the love of God. What happens if you keep yourself in the love of God? Then you'll know the love of Christ which passes knowledge and there be filled with all the fullness of God. That's That's... 
That's the beautiful thing. Hey, darling, you are beautiful. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for Naomi. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for the women that rise up and step into their inheritance. Amen. Hallelujah. Who go all the way, trust you with total abandonment. Look at them bright eyes. Amen. The scripture says, verse 16. He says, verse 15. It says, see then that you walk circumspectly. You know, that you walk being mindful of what everybody is seeing when they see you. Okay? What everybody's feeling when they feel you. It's wonderful to sit down with people, okay, and feel the, and feel the presence of the Lord rather than feeling their problem. Huh? How many times you sit down with people and all you got is a problem, an accusation, a hurt, or got something to settle? And that's all they're going to feel. What if you don't have that no more? Huh? And you get to sit down with people and all they feel is not a problem but the presence of the Lord. Think about that, people. See that you walk as... Listen, listen, how, God, listen how Paul preached it. He, let me just kind of give it the impact to you. See that you walk with a clear understanding of the perspective of what people see and your representation of the Lord Jesus. <laughs> Not as fools, but as wise. Not as people, in other words, void of understanding. Just because you might be earthly smart don't mean anything. The wisdom of men is foolishness to God. Men in the height of their wisdom wisdom, they can't yield to the Spirit of the Lord. So he says, don't be fools, don't be void of understanding, but be wise. He says to us, he says, then here's the activity that I want you to engage in. Do you want revival? Do you want a great awakening? Do you want to see the blindness of heart and mind that is on people in this nation and other nations broken? Then what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to participate with the redeeming of the time. There's a way to redeem time. There's a, there's a way to redeem the times that you live in. We're living in a certain time period. The times that we live in right now, you understand it that way. The times that we live in right now, everybody's doing all these different things. God says, I can show you how to redeem your times. In other words, I can show you how to change your culture. Change culture. So redeeming, redeeming the times for the days are evil. Well, Paul, what Paul said, Paul said, I got power. I got power to turn people from Satan to God. Do you have power? You have power to turn people from Satan to God? Do you have power? Yes. Show me that power. Paul said, I'm going to come to you and I want to see your power. Huh? If you told me we, you played golf, we would go out and we would play golf. We want to see you play golf. I went out with a guy the other day, play golf, he hit everything but the ball. <laughs> he tore the ground up. Some chunks of grass went flying further than I've ever seen them <laughs> I'm caught away in it. The fire of God is, is here burning. The fire of God is burning right now in my life, in my, in my body, in my spirit my soul 
There's absolutely no reason why, why that any, everyone in this place shouldn't be under the same arresting anointing of the Holy Ghost. And you know what I used to do is I would just watch my kids. At this point in time in the meeting, I just make sure that they under the, under the anointing. Because if they don't know how to get under the anointing, they don't know how to get, if they don't know how to respond to the, to the things of the Spirit, I know what's going to happen. They're going to respond to the things of this world. They're going to be overcome with, with all the lies and all the, thing, the tricks of the enemy. See, the Lord wants you to be strong in the strength of the Lord and the power of His might. How hard is it to get, become strong, to have His strength, His power, His might? As easy as it is to be filled. When you're filled, there's, an, there's a reaction of your body to being filled. There's a reaction of your life, an expression to being filled. Always, every time anybody was ever filled with the Spirit, any time the Spirit of the Lord came on them, there was a reaction in their body, a reaction in their life, a, re a response, a supernatural activity. Now, come on, folks. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. There is an event that the Spirit of the Lord wants to create for your life tonight, right now. He, there's an event. I can see it. I'm, at, I'm really speaking the Word of God on behalf of the Holy Spirit so that that event can take place. Because as you hear the Word and you believe and you want these things and you begin to respond, Receive from him, the Holy Spirit comes now to cause those things which the Word of God has declared to be made manifest. So the Word speaks it, just like in creation, and the Holy Ghost causes it to appear. Just like in creation. Whew. So the Lord says to you, he says, don't be drunk with wine. I wonder why I use that word. Why do I use that word? That doesn't make any sense. Where did that come from? That's right out of the blue. Ain't it? They'll be drunk with wine. What does that have to do with anything? I thought we were talking about being filled with the Spirit and awakening and, huh? From our sleep. There is a realm of glory that's ecstasy for us. It's pleasures that Satan and this world can never hold a candle to. It's holy emotions that, that will change all the definition of what you believe emotions are. Men have known and been captivated and carried by emotions of sorrow, by emotions of fear, by emotions of anger, by emotions of hurt, by emotions of pain, by these various different things that the spirit of this world and earthly circumstance imposes. But God has for us a whole nother realm. It's a heavenly realm. It's something that only exists in Him that can only be found when we begin to respond to and participate with Him. There is a joy there, a joy at His right hand. There is a joy that is unspeakable and full of glory. It's fullness. Fullness of joy in His presence. Fullness. That all of a sudden changes all your meaning and value system it changes all your definitions of life, of what you want, of what's important to you, what's meaningful to you. There is a realm of glory. There is a place of pleasure. 
at his right hand. There is a place of life so abundant that those things of this world would never be able to pull you away from. Father is inviting us in to see them. It's how the times are redeemed because the days are evil. It's how, it's how you now find a place of protection against them. It's where you now get so filled up there's no room for anything else. It's where everybody else is doing all these things that look like fun and look like they're, they're pleasure and looks like there's something that you need and something that you want to do. But listen, listen, listen. When you're filled with the Spirit, you have no room for it. You find yourself overwhelmed with a heavenly influence and Satan can't even begin to touch you. And you find yourself there so filled up. Filled. Not drunk with wine, we're in his debauchery. Not having to find some kind of release, some kind of refreshing, some kind of relaxation, some kind of escape. With the alcohol of this world or the drugs of this world are the means by which men find repose from all of their issues and stress. And torments but being filled with the Spirit being caught up into heaven being translated over into another realm interacting with God rather than man interacting with God rather than the spirit of this world being filled with the Spirit speaking to yourself in Psalms Psalms are prophetic songs. That's what a psalm is. It, 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 it's good to sing. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All ye, all ye lands. Serve the Lord, the Lord with gladness. Come before His presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, He is God. It is He that hath made us. And not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. But that's not really what a psalm necessarily is. Even though that was Psalms 100. <laughs> the psalm is, is, a, is a prophetic utterance of the Holy Ghost. So, hymns. Hymns. Hymns capture. Hymns literally capture the moves of God. Hymns capture the moves of God. Those events, those nights. It doesn't have to be from time to time. Every once in a while. It can be every day. It can be every week. If you're distracted with the affairs of this life, if there's a struggle and torment in your home, if a husband and wife can't come into agreement about the things of the Spirit, about the things of God, if there's animosity and division in the house of the Lord, can never have these things. If there's rebellion and strife, there's division and envy. <laughs> there's every evil thing. But if you just give yourself over to this realm of glory, <laughs> hallelujah, whew, you can the most secure day. Libera na mombra bete. Just be like you should book in Antaya. Just be a member of the vine. They feel in Basatoya. And then you have a spiritual song. Spiritual song. Hallelujah. Spirit, a spiritual song is different from it. It's different from a hymn. It's different from a prophetic song. Because a spiritual song is singing in, in the spirit. And, 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 and the spiritual song carries you away. In a whole nother realm. It really does. It really does. Because, I mean, I know that most people in here, you've been carried away just singing the Lord, singing and worshiping the Lord with a song with the understanding. But let me tell you, there is a way to be carried far further away in the spiritual song than with the song of the understanding, the one that you've just been singing over and over again. The Lord invites you in. He says, come on in. He says, come on in. He says, come on, participate here in this place. 
And what's going to happen? What's going to happen is this. You'll be giving thanks. You'll be giving thanks. You'll be giving thanks. You'll be giving thanks. See that? You'll be giving thanks. Always for all things unto God. And the Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you find yourself literally living as an oracle of God. In other words, what's coming out of your mouth is the word of the Lord. What's coming out of your mouth is continually praises. People get around me, they're going to find out that I, all I really like to do is talk about things of the Spirit. All I really like to do is talk about things of the Lord. Obviously, we have to go to work and we have to do things within the framework of work. But I would really like to talk about things. Papa loves seeing you. He's so beautiful. You all smiles. And that's, that's a face to put up on the, on the screen right there. That's bright and happy. It's sunshiny. Full of the Spirit of the Lord. Full of life and blessings. Did you know you're going to decide whether your life is filled with life and blessings or whether they're filled with death and cursings? Did you know that you decide? You decide. You make choices. And people, when they, when they make choices for their self-interest and for the way that they want it, they're choosing death and cursing. When we choose the way Father wants it, we choose life and blessings. Now, you're responsible now. You're responsible. So the Holy Spirit says, I want to grow you up. I've got an expedited plan for you. Therefore, all of you that have been baptized in the Holy Ghost, you need to give yourself continually to praying in the Spirit. You need to give yourself continually to coming to understand these things of where the Holy Ghost would begin to train you and, and, and minister to you and strengthen you. It won't be long and you'll find a Holy Ghost governor on the inside of you. And as soon as the anointing gets, starts dropping at least a little bit, because, you know, you come up against some challenging situations, things didn't work well at the work or the job or you didn't like the food or whatever, whatever, you know, somebody looked at you cross, governor goes, kicks in, bottles to get every kind of my bit, bit, bit. Gets you right back up to where you were. Right? Just, it just said that all those things aren't heavy, weighing on you. By the end of the day, my goodness, you got so much baggage, you look like somebody carrying, you know, a 300-pound pack on your shoulders. Right? Can't walk very far with a 300-pound pack. You notice that? Then it won't be long. And then all of a sudden, you, you, don't, you don't just... You can turn this up. You might hear me. <clears throat> Hardly. It won't be long and then you can recognize the Holy Ghost calling you to prayer. Because all of a sudden you'll have this burst of a special tongue. And you can just sit there and enjoy it for a minute or whatever if you want. But if you go ahead and go with it and then just excuse yourself. Because you recognize, oh, God, the Holy Ghost. I know him now enough to recognize he's calling me to prayer. See, most people don't even know him enough to, to be able to respond like that. They don't know him that way. They don't know him. I'm, I'm trying to help you. I want you to know him. I want you to interact with him. This is how he talks. This is how he moves. Somebody said, I don't, I don't think it's fair. I don't like it. It doesn't make any sense to me. This is the way God did it. He thinks it's fair. He likes it. And I'm happy with it. You, and then if you just excuse yourself because you know that's that, that's that unction of the Holy Ghost, that's the prayer, call you to prayer, and you excuse yourself, and you go back into the bedroom or you go back off, you know, into the backyard or wherever it is you need to get to go to get away in your car if you at work. It's a great place. You got to go drive around the block. People think you've lost your mind. <laughs> He's sitting out there in the car. His mouth's going so fast, I can't even imagine what's going on. His face is red. I don't know who he's screaming at. (laughs) 
and you'll find a realm. You'll find an access into a place that you don't know anything about right now. But once you find this place, this access in this place, you'll love to go there every day. And the amazing thing about it is it's never the same. It's always unique, and, and over, over, over time, it gets intense. It just gets intense. I've never been disappointed. I have an access. I don't have to be like a sorcerer and put on a robe and walk around waiting for some event. I get to go right into this realm by the Holy Ghost into a spiritual realm far greater than anything that anybody in any spiritual realm can possibly access. You have the same access to the heavenlies. And now all the, all the things that are going on in sorcery and witchcraft and demonism and blindness of heart and mind that is ruling the city and this region, suddenly you're gaining power. You're gaining authority to function in a realm to bring down strongholds, to cast down those things that are in spiritual wickedness in high places holding this city back. The Father's calling you into a realm. And then, as I said earlier, you begin to interact with the Holy Spirit. He'll tell you when you're getting ready. He'll tell you when you're getting ready to have to face a temptation. You all, he'll strengthen you, prepare you. It's a special tongue. You get, to, you, you, you becomes identifiable to you. When I, when, when I begin to move in any kind of gifts of healing, there's a tongue that comes with it. When I get to ready to move in certain prophecy, there's a tongue that comes with it. Miracles, there's a tongue that comes with it. Faith, there's a tongue, con, tongue that comes with it. You get to know him. You get to know how he operates. It's, this is great. You get to recognize him. Father, and I thank you for doing this miracle in every person in this place. I thank you for doing this miracle in every person in this place that no one has to rely on their own strength anymore. No one has to try to figure it out anymore. Nobody's got to sit around and talk to themselves anymore. Trying to understand how to mitigate their situation. No one has to wonder anymore, how do you step into the gift of faith? How do you step into these various dimensions and operations of the gifts of the Spirit? Hallelujah. You know, let me just say this. When, when I know that I'm supposed to do something in God, okay, He gives me a vision, and I know, okay, well, you're supposed to go do this. Okay, what, all I do is this. I just... I know I'm supposed to do it. I don't go try to do it. I just wait for the gift of faith to hit me. You guys are on the front row. I just wait for the gift of faith to hit me. Because if you, if you do it that way, obviously, in total dependence upon the Holy Ghost, you know you're supposed to go do something. If you try to go do it on your own, it ain't going to work. You're going to be disappointed. So now if you've learned enough about the Holy Ghost to depend upon Him, that He actually speaks to us and empowers us through His gifts. Okay? So I know I'm supposed to go do this, but I'm going to do nothing until I get hit with the get to faith. Then I go do it. Because that's when He wants me to do it. He gives me a vision. Oh, I know I'm supposed to do such and such a thing. Okay. Sit here and wait. Wait on God. Just do what I'm supposed to be doing. Mind my own business. Rather, doing the things I am, I'm supposed to do that I'm responsible to do. Then all of a sudden... I get hit with a gift of faith right from the Holy Ghost. That's the moment that now I know I'm supposed to go do this thing. And when I do it, it works. Amen. Like getting this building. Like getting this property. Like selling our, 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 selling our building, who had, which had gone 50% below market value for the full debt that we had on it. Huh? The Lord wants me to sell the building. Okay. The Lord wants me to sell the building. So people, oh, the Lord wants me to sell the building. And we just sit around. We wait. Boom, hit with the gift of faith. Oh, we're going to sell the building now. Ha uh-huh. It's real simple. Getting to know how the Holy Spirit, He talks in very plain ways. Very powerful, evident ways. 
Now, you can miss all of this. You can miss all of this. There can be other pretties, other nice, distractive things, and now you got to wonder, well, hmm. You can see, I'm actually talking for an effect. I believe that while I minister this thing, these things of the Spirit, you could be hit with it. The ability now to interact with God on another level. That's it. I'm not trying to convince your mind of anything. I'm going right for your spirit. Somebody said, why does the meeting take so long? Because I'm trying to talk to your spirit. Most meetings are designed to give people some information. I'm not trying to give you no information. I'm moving for a miracle. This is the working of a miracle. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, it's just like this. Just like this. Sitting here with our hands lifted up. It's just like this. It's powerful. Just like this. That you find yourself suddenly raptured away in divine glory. Dear people, just be faithful to the Lord. Just be faithful. Because I'm going to tell you, be faithful, be sincere, be desperate, be hungry. You will not be disappointed. You cannot fail. It's impossible. There is no way that the Lord is ever turning a blind eye and a deaf ear to people who are passionate, faithful, persistent, relentless. You're going to get everything that God has purposed for you to have. It's just it. He, that's just the way it is. I remember a time I had gone to the prayer room for so many years. For so many years. I had gone to the prayer room over and over again faithfully for so many years. In fact, it had been 10 years. And one day I was sitting in the prayer room at the church and I wasn't complaining to the Lord about people not showing up it just, I was just there with him because it was as much about me as anyone else that's what, I was doing what the Lord told me to do so that's really all if I'm doing what the Lord told me to do that's all that's important I was sitting there all of a sudden the angel of the Lord came and grabbed a hold of my hands and lifted him straight up At that moment, the Lord told me and showed me and gave me an understanding that he would use us to do, to do countywide meetings. I'm standing with the angel of the Lord. I didn't have her and Aaron. I had an angel of the Lord. And the Lord began to unfold to me some transitions that were going to be taking place. and Just amazing stuff. It's just there. He says, we just learned to talk to him. He says, now, are you going to do this? Well, how am I going to do it? I'll show you. Can I, can I know now? No. You get to know one step at a time. One step at a time. And the beautiful thing of it is, it's such a wonderful blessing to get it one step at a time. But you're never going to get it one step at a time unless you develop a personal relationship with the Holy Ghost. Benny Hinn was not wrong when he said, you need to, if you want to get this, you need to get up in the morning and say, good morning, good morning, Holy Spirit. I think a lot of things were left out of the book that should have been told. But I just, I, I pray, if you'll just take this and start doing it, everything will change. Stand with me. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take Him at His word, just to rest upon His promise, just to know 
Thus said the Now, if there's anyone in here in your, and you haven't been baptized in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in a heavenly language, speak now. 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 Sikara ni ikiki. Speak now. Speak now. Sikara na sikika. Speak now. Out of your belly. Kada mo Ha ha. Out of your belly. Now. Now I'm going to tell you something. There's not a person standing in this room right at this moment that wants to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Ha ha ha. That just at this very moment, the fire of God and the presence of God touched your life. And I know what happens when you live in a realm of where there's a lot of people who supposedly represent God and say that it's not something that the Lord has for us. You've got to work with, you got to work through a lot of doubt and unbelief and opposition. But I tell you, the Spirit of the Lord touched you right now. Ha ha ha, hallelujah. It's there. It's just a gorenea tiata. It's the easiest gift to get. It's the zero. Just lift your hands, everybody. Just lift your hands right towards heaven. It's the easiest gift to receive. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Kira mama nasi ala na mande yese. Kira mangala si ala mama darete yalo. Listen, if anybody wants prayer, we're here to pray with you and for you. And um, <laughs> let me say this. It, when you learn how to move past being tired by the anointing, you can move past all sickness by the anointing. Practice with tired rather than practice with sickness. It's true. There's a realm of refreshing and strengthening that you can touch with the realms of the, in the realms of the Holy Spirit. You, my goodness. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hurrah, mama, man, de que se tole mi niente. Hurrah, mama, man, gara, na se te yatara na niya. Si cara na na la nembera. Mi na 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 la mando lo lo baku se de na mande lo lo. Kira mama maquia de lo basura valo. Gura veve le le rum. Gula vale le le rum. Gura veve de que arara si ti de la no mando. Gura va 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 de rum. Gura mama na na ne. Kura mama manda le dinde redeo Kira vosi ala vara kira mama ndalo Kira vosi ala vara tarra basayo Kira vosi ala vara basavra vave Zara vede Kura vaso man Tira la saro Kula vede pruma Kira vanda la basu Kira vedo sermain, kira vanda la vacha bra ba ba ta ro ro ra. Ha ha. Kura vedo sing, kira ba bra ba sa ro. Kula vete mam, kira vete ra ba kela manu sotoki, kira vata ro so ba ro va mando la ve. Kura va sorum, bira na manda la ki or soro vederum. Kira la manje kara la kai, oshi kara batu, ma bata sira va va sudan da va ve. Soto, soto, kiara batu, ma manga danja la sato, kiara bokor, mingara la sharra ma mando fide de lero, shiara manje ribataco, bela vele. Basse, Matteo, 
Shekare botum, mama mandanda ravacho tsari rebera, gira na mangira vatu so tela vatero, mama nembera vakia la vasita lo. Lift your voice, kia romundo ku, viva la na mama lande romundo yololor, gira na mangiri mama zira vatero. Jela shana ya la bakor mama menero. Father, your glory, your power, your outpourings. Father, we cry in Jesus' name for your glory. We cry in Jesus' name for your revivals. We cry in Jesus' name for the reign of your presence now. Kosatiye, sapada yalaye, sapada yalaye, sapada yalaye, sapadi yala begi yala, sasa yala yala, manda yala bukusiye, sapai yala kisado, mamba sayo, mama mea, kasa deve. Cura mangia la saio, golo lo sotto, mi malanandere babalo, golo sottore, ma mangia la sala la chinundo. Capa da io io, ma mamandero mamoro, se reveve chi me lo lo monzo, va vanno dore, non mi dire chi. Hallelujah. Father, we praise you. Father, we praise you. Father, we praise you. Hey, there's a way to step into the realm, to move past everything that would hinder you. Come now, fellowship with him. Kuro mamo kishiga na ndera na mando sherebe kere mama la na ndera mandoro si kara la yeri mama manele tisha lolo mongo ro sherebe o kuro sotero mama mandera mama angela kiala lo kuma mande ya mora mama o si kaya le kiala pongo mana na ndera baborom mana nero. Kira mamando, na 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 na, dera na na no. Siri na mando, mane na na ngele manero. Si ara mambo, kuna na 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 ngele mamando, lolo baro baro. Woo! Hallelujah! Si karareya, di na vangara mamando. Suri di me, kun mana na na mangja da la dera. Choro robo, kun mama mande levi ara babal, di na 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 mando. <laughs> oh, wonderful, 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 oh, wonderful, Counselor, mighty God, oh, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful is the Lord. <laughs> just pray with me just a little longer. Just worship with me just a little longer. Just worship. Just say, get a yellow bullseye. Get him a man to Baba Randero Mamonje, Kurobo Picas, Lidden and Dunder Lero, Zeradalalalalam and Bandu, Lidden and Dir Vervaco, Sidi. Holy Spirit, it is our desire to know you, to fellowship with you, to walk with you. Father, I pray, O oh God, in your great love and mercy, cause the eyes of the understanding to be open, that everyone see. Hallelujah. 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 
Aleluya, Aleluya. Is there anybody here tonight with pain in your body? Anybody with sickness or pain? Anything cold, diseases of any sort? Anything, any sickness, any pain? You won't be healed. Just come. Just come. Just come stand up here. I'm going to pray for you. Just come stand. Just stay there. Stay right there. You're good. What's up with you? You have a bad immune system? Yeah. And, and also I've had a knee problem that's been around for like a year and a half. Okay. Okay. Well, what's your name? Uh, Aaron. Aaron? Are you a San Jose State? Yes. Okay. You're just down visiting family? Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus. Aaron, right? Yes. Sir. Great name, by the way. Very priestly name. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that this cold, this virus goes off Aaron's body right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Father, thank you for healing Aaron's knee, that the injury no longer will bother him. Jesus. Now, Aaron, you gave your life to Jesus, right? Hmm. Well, so we're just going to go ahead and do that right right now, okay? Say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Take full control of my being. I want that new heart. I want that new spirit that comes by a miracle. Because you come with your power and you change me. Change me now, Lord Jesus. Father, I thank you for the anointing of the Holy Ghost that takes a hold of Aaron's life and makes him a new creation in you. Father, we know that your wonderful grace and glory is present at right this moment, very moment to not only transform the life of Aaron, giving him a new heart and a new spirit, but also take this coal away and also take away the injury of his knee. And so right now, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Father, we thank you for this wonderful gift of salvation, the change that comes. And now I ask you, Lord, fill Aaron with the Holy Ghost. Fill him up. Right out of his belly. Let those tekerenese, loco romangete, let the glory of heaven just come gushing up out of his innermost being right now. <laughs> now in Jesus' name. I put the blood of Jesus Christ upon you, washes you, cleanses you from every sin, and releases you from everything that would try to hinder you from all that God would, would, would do. And so he's going to do it now. Amen. Amen. So Aaron, just lift your hands towards heaven just as an act of surrender. Just lift your hands go just like this right here. Thank you, Jesus. Say, thank you, Jesus. For washing me in your blood. For washing away every stain of sin. For filling me with your Holy Spirit within. Thank you for the gift of your life. I'm serving you for the rest of my life. Hallelujah. I told you. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. Ha, ha, ha. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bangrushaya. Bangrushaya. Bangrusha boteya taste. Monde rete. Mombreseo. What's going on? What you want? What's up? It's almost all gone. Well, what was it? Oh, no, you can't have that. Today's Thanksgiving. You can't have pain in your abdomen. It's messing everything up. It's working counterproductive to whole, the whole purposes of Thanksgiving. Now, how is it? Now, in the name of Jesus, there will be no sickness in your body, no, no pain in your stomach. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How are you doing now? Huh? <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. What's up? 
You do. Why don't you lift your hands towards heaven and go to heaven? And then I'll come back in a few minutes. Well, what's up with you? You had a sore throat? <laughs> Praise God that it is gone. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for touching Claire with the anointing. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for a pain. She lives in a pain-free zone. Look at her. She lives in the Holy Ghost zone. Hallelujah. What's up with you? Well, just lift your hands towards heaven. Go to heaven. I'll come back. What's up with you? You do. Well, just lift your hands towards heaven. Go to heaven. I'll be back. What's up? What's wrong with your chest? Okay, well, the pain goes now. What, is the pain going? The pain goes now. Tell you when all the pain's gone. Is the pain gone? Is the pain in the back gone? It's, it's one of those pains that, that comes and goes. It's not well, like okay, it's well, tell me, well, tell me when the pain's gone. What did you do to your solar, solar, what, solar, so, solar plugs? What did you do? I, I think it's reverberating around from my back to my front. Okay. So you don't know what it is? I don't know what it is. Is it gone yet? I command the pain to go in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. It has to leave your body. It's gone yet? It's good. It's going. Well, lift your hands towards heaven. Go to heaven. It'll be all gone. Aaron, how are you doing? How are you doing? No sore throat? No more sore throat? Thank you, Jesus, for the anointing. Thank you, Lord Jesus. For this beautiful realm of your glory, of your peace, of your joy, of your life, of your presence. Ah. Thank you, Father, for this great grace. Hallelujah. Ha -ha. Hallelujah. Mahagiatahaya. Mahagiatahaya. Mahadigiatakahoya. What's happening, Dwayne? Well, just lift your hands towards heaven and breathe clearly. Sutro. Father, touch Dwayne. Strengthen him right now by your spirit, by the Holy Ghost. Strengthen him. Hallelujah. Kona manje. No kamase. Kalam. How are you? Doing good? What is that? What's up? Lift your hands towards heaven. <laughs> be, be strengthened by the Spirit of the Lord now. Healed. What's up? Cold and viruses and stuffy noses and pain and itches, congestion. Now, how are you? Huh? Much better. You're not supposed to get headaches. You're too young to have headaches. You're just a baby. <laughs> Little baby Zoe. I don't know how you got so tall. Somehow, yeah. Just lift your head towards heaven. What's up over here with my darling sweetheart? What do you need, darling? You want Papa to pray? Healed in Jesus' name. Healed in Jesus' name. Healed. She takes her little teddy bear. She puts her little hands up. Goes, healed in Jesus' name. And they fall down, so she puts them back up. Healed in Jesus' name. I love my baby. Dear is the glory of heaven. 
that takes hold of Aaron and raptures his soul away. There's a glory that has taken hold of Aaron and has purchased him and purposed him for a glorious day. An opportunity to represent the Almighty God to stand in his stead. Watch Aaron. Aaron's stepping out of the world and right on in the heaven. He's not going to slow down. He's not going to hang around on the borders. He's not going to hang around on the outside. He's going right on in to the inside, into the holies of holies. He's not going to sit around and gaze and wonder. Amen. He shy you, and neither are you, in Jesus' name. And I'll so tell you, in the name of Jesus. Irabasagira. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Aaron, just say, Father, I thank you for a new heart. I thank you for a new spirit. I thank you that you give to me this new life. In you, in you. I thank you, Lord, that you've given me the privilege of being born again, of being born of the Spirit, so that I can begin to interact with you. Hallelujah. That's so real. Well, let me just tell you what you need to do. You need to find, you need to find as many people as you possibly have the capacity to reach and give them a hug and tell them that you love them in Jesus' name. I'm going to throw up all over you. 